questions. Um, it's Monday, November 25th. It's 6 13. We're going to call the meeting to order. This is community board one's monthly full board meeting. We start as usual with members of the public session. Um, so we're going to go through people who have signed up. Um, let's see. We have. We make sure that we want people who are speaking. We're going to. Uh, let me refresh this because it looks a little odd. Uh, do we have Lloyd F in the room or online? Lloyd, yes. All right, so Lloyd, let's welcome Lloyd to go first. Guys. Hello, welcome, Lloyd. Hey, how are you all? Thanks for your time. Your, and your time starts now. Go Great. ahead. Um, this is, I'll be very brief. I'm not sure what can be done at all about our issue. We just wanted to bring it to your attention. Um, I'm the building manager of 443 Greenwich Street. Um, for those of you not familiar with the area, it is a landmark area. The street is in pretty bad shape out front. Um, but our sidewalks are very smooth and nice. So we have um, we have several e-bikes just zipping by, several an hour just zipping by every hour. And um, you know they're coming by 25, 30 miles an hour. We're just at a point where we're worried they're going to hit a kid or a pet or something exiting the building. Um, and we're not sure what can be done. We're just trying to see what avenues we can explore to help curb that that issue it's just a matter of time like i said before somebody's going to get hurt so that's pretty much it um thanks for your time thank you very much i would encourage you uh to email zach bomber who's our district manager um and we can certainly try and navigate and help with that uh zach will drop his email in the chat for you so you can get that all righty thanks so much all right, let's move on to the next person. Uh, Princess Brooks. And then Kofi Bentham. Have either in the room? No, nope. they're online. Find them online. Uh, Princess Brooks is online. If you can unmute her. All right. Thank you. Princess Brooks, you should have received a request to unmute yourself so you can speak during the session. You want to try and come over and then take her back down? And let's just make sure everybody signed in. Okay, we will come back to her. Not a problem. Let's see if we can find Kofi Benton. See, Kofi is Kofi in the room? Seeing no one else here for that. Um, John Scott, you requested to speak during the public session. Yes, how are you? Um, I just wanted to alert everybody uh, that we're having a community meeting on Tuesday, December 10th at 7 o'clock at the Borough of Manhattan Community College. Uh, it's a group of organizers from the community to fight this 90-story um, <laughs> So um, I would like everybody to come because this is only the beginning. They're going to do a 90 story here and there's going to be another 90 story. Uh, my time's up. No, what time is it? 7 p.m. at the Borough Manhattan Community College. What's the date again? Tell it's, the it's the, uh, yeah, I, uh, Zach was so kind to print out some flyers. It's December 10th. 
Um, I would also ask that uh, you could take a look at the new uh, website that they created. The new uh, group is called the uh, Community First Development Coalition. And the website is www.cfdcoalition.org. Uh, we would like a, a turnout. Um, the last time, what happened is we rent, we don't get it free, the, the college. We want to fill it up because, like I said, it's not only this 90 story, they have other plans in the future too. So we got to start the fight today. Are the elected officials coming? Uh, well, at the moment, Marte is going to speak. Uh, we'll oh, have to ask um, our buddy over here. Oh, did you invite the elected officials? Uh, no, just uh, uh, Marte. Okay. I Answer. Thank you. Okay. Moving we'll along, I am double checking. Michael. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, come up. Uh, you're fine right there. Good. 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 Introduce yourself. Oh, sure. There are cameras and owls on the table. So they will pick you up and they will move to find you. Oh, AI self, huh? Mm -hmm. Alright, so my name is Michael Demmer. I'm a resident of Baby North Wall Street in the Penn's Plaza. Mr. Scott's been an honorable man this whole fight for years. And uh, Bobby Lesh. And everybody else too for participating here. But uh, the issue is with a uh, food truck that's right outside my door. Just <laughs> Hello? 
That's what I get. That's what I get. Uh, I've heard you're muted. We're muted. That was us echoing. What's us echoing? Mm. Mm. Ms. Perkins, can you unmute yourself and talk? Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. There we go. Hi, my name is Princess Brooks, and I'm a pediatric patient service as services administrator and i'm here to speak in support of the new york city bill 0559 which aims to improve nutrition education in public schools here in new york city this is a bill that i'm passionate about due to working closely with children on a daily basis and eventually wanting to start my own family nutrition education in schools can allow for children to make better decisions when eating essentially having them improve their grades academically improve their performance in um attendance and improve health long term and short term. Currently over 40% of New York City schools do not have a nutrition education program and here in district 1 there's a lack of information regarding nutrition education in the schools. With this bill the Department of Education is required to submit an annual report on nutrition education programs held in the schools. Within the support it is required to include the type of nutrition education held, the number of certified certified dietitians in the school and any disparities. Collecting this report allows for concrete data, ensuring that all students have access to the proper education that is needed, leading to better eating habits and improved performance academically. I strongly urge you to support this bill and I hope to see that the council passes this, ensuring that children in New York City schools receive quality nutrition education that they need. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, next would be Maureen Connor. Yeah, I'm here. Hi, Maureen. Welcome. Um, so I am representing. Uh, can you come a little closer so we can hear you and speak? And please introduce yourself. Like my best. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So my name is Maureen Connor, and I am representing three buildings uh, that are contiguous to a parking lot, uh, 74 Hudson Street, for which a building has been proposed. Uh, and oh, sorry. Sorry. keep going. Yeah, um, we believe that well, the three buildings are 1 Worth Street, 10 Leonard Street and 90 Hudson Street. Um, we believe the development of 74 Hudson Street is presented to this as presented to the CD violates our rights. Developer Constantine Photos was supposed to share his analysis of his right to build and the proposed building, but he hasn't, despite his assurance. There are three different easements for each building, one for each building, which haven't been coordinated. Uh, the development also contacted one representative from 10 Leonard Street, who had at the time of the call asked, we asked him to coordinate a meeting with representatives from all three buildings. Once again, we haven't heard from him. Uh, also, we don't think that the design of the building is appropriate for our Tribeca landmark area. Uh, but just to say, uh, the building is meant to be a, uh, a swimming pool in the parking lot in, in a building, and it's for teaching children to swim. Uh, so our questions are, first of all, uh, what if this doesn't work out? Uh, it's actually, he's allowed to build only a one story building, well, 18 foot building. So he's proposed two stories for that building. And so the, uh, the landmark committee, when, when we uh, were here last week, said that um, they didn't think the building was appropriate, but they were also for, for a landmarked area, but they were also questioning the use. And if this use of a swimming pool to teach children how to swim doesn't work out, then what is the space going to be used for? And it's basically just going to be a big box. So it, it could be, you know, a CVS or all kinds of things. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank, thank you for coming to testify. Thank you. Um, let's go to coffee. Denton, he or she in the room. I don't want to talk about the name, but that's right. I sincerely apologize if I butchered that one. 
K-O-F-F-I-D-E-N-T-U-N. Okay. Uh, did we hear from Ann Baraka? Hi. Hi, Ann. Welcome. Well, thank you. I don't need a lot of time. I just wanted to say hi. I'm the library manager of Battery Park City Branch Library. I have a toddler and a preschooler, so sorry. That's why I'm not often here. Uh, I just wanted to say hi, introduce myself, uh, let you know about some of the programs we have. We have some great stuff. Um, we have something for adults. We have something for teens. We just started um, a teen lounge hour Tuesdays at 3 o'clock. We're trying to get the numbers up. Uh, we have lots of programming for children four or five, six times a week sometimes. Uh, we have a creative aging series program. Um, we have bilingual story time, music classes, of course, free Wi-Fi, and computer sessions with the library card. And yeah, my name is Anne. I'm the library manager. And I wanted to say hi. Thank you. Um, well, thank you very much for coming. The one thing I will tell you for okay. teenagers yeah. is some of them don't get out of high school better. Yeah, that's true. I know. So three to four is a drop in session. Mm -hmm. I know we're still toying with different times to have it. So I know four o'clock might be better. Yeah. So think about it. Okay. Noted. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. All right. Uh, looking forward, this is going to be a one last call for coffee Bentham. Okay, uh, so I will say, oh, he's on. And that's it. Coffee. Going on Friday. Okay. Just give us a second to get coffee. Yeah. Okay, coffee, you can uh, unmute yourself and welcome to Community Board One. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, you wanted to speak during the public session? Yes, please. This is your time. Go ahead. You can speak. My name is Kofi, and um, I wanted to uh, bring before the board um, a legislation that I'm very, very passionate about. And I want to put out on record that I came to the United States about 13 years ago and as someone who has experienced um, the life of an undocumented immigrant in New York City, I really hold this legislation with a lot of passion. I'm talking about Intro 0859. It's a local law to amend the administrative code of New York City in relation to requiring third party food delivery services and third party career services to provide food delivery workers in New York City with information underlining their pay calculation. I believe that ever since the city um, brought in a minimum wage for food delivery workers, they have experienced an uptick in their earnings. And in line with making sure that there is compliance, having this law in place is really, really significant. Also, I believe that this bill is going to lead um, to a lot of transparency because having their pay calculation laid out before them whenever they are paid helps them to have a clearer picture of what goes into whatever is deductions are taken out of their pay. And also this will help with fairness because transparent pay calculation can help um, ensure that all workers are, are satisfied whenever they are paid. And also it will help to empower workers in terms of how they can allocate their time when it comes to how much time they want to commit to work, how much time they want to commit to family, how much time they want to commit to other activities, having a clearer pay calculation gives them a better picture of all of these things. And this is why I decided to use this opportunity to come before the board and put it out there that intro 0859, which seeks to make sure that the calculation, uh, the pay calculation of um, delivery workers is um, passed so that delivery workers in New York City who have been serving us for so long will be able to have a clearer picture of what goes into their pay and also to make sure that platforms like Uber Eats and DoorDash 
uh, complying with the law that was passed. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much uh, for coming and thank you for speaking up. I think I'm looking through, unless somebody is here to speak in the public session who I have not called on, I think we've gotten everyone. Let me just double check online to make sure. Yep, I think I have. Um, I have. So then that opens up our public hearing, which is public comment on the Cannabis Control Board new licenses, the 100,000 foot rule. I actually do not see anyone who has signed up to speak specifically on that. So we open it and we close the public hearing and then we move on. Okay. Before we adopt the minutes, I'm going to ask um, and do something that I normally don't do. In my chair report, there's a slide with a timer on it. Could you pull that one up for me? I think the uh, second or third slide. Okay. Keep going. Next one. Okay. Oops, back one. Nope, back, back, back. Back. There we go. We're going to now. Wrong one. Yeah, the one with the timer. There you go. Okay. All right. So I pulled this out of order before we go into the rest of the business session. This was discussed at exec, and for those who don't come to exec, it's okay because this is all good news. So these are upcoming changes, which start tonight. So starting today, all the elected officials got a lovely happy holidays email from me. Um, and hopefully everybody in the room has gotten it from their offices. If you are in person with us as an elected official, our goal is for you to speak for about six minutes and then take Q&A. If you're a representative, you get three and mm. you will be timed. If there's a hot topic and you need to ask your question, great. If not, we're going to move on. If you're online with us, you get four minutes for an elected official and two for the rest because all of us need to be here. It's, we want to give them the preference if they're here and they're spending time with us. We appreciate that. If they have hot topics, adjustments, or you know, a special speaker they bring with them, we can always adjust. But this is a guideline because, as I've mentioned, our goal is to get back under to a two and a half hour to a max of a three hour board meeting, no longer three to three and a half hours. Right? So that is one starting next month for board members. Really important for people to remember. If you have a committee report without a resolution, it's two minutes per topic presented or six total. We chopped it from eight. Focus on the highlights and the summaries. If you have presentations or links or anybody has sent you things, we can include that in the folder so people can read that. And people can always go back and watch the recording if they have more questions. But to repeat everything that was done in committee for a, a report at the board is not necessarily fair for those who spent the time in committee and are here. And your resolutions. Your drafts are due to the office no less than 24 hours prior to the full board meeting, which means Friday at 3 o'clock for a Monday meeting because Zach, Lucy, and Ones do not normally work Saturdays and Sundays. Or Monday at noon if it's before a Tuesday meeting. That means any slides you want to show, any resolutions that you have, any information that needs to go into the public folder for the public should at the latest be there by noon on Monday. If your committee was fortunate enough to meet in the first week of the month or even the second, just don't wait. Get your drafts done, send them to the office, and then enjoy the rest of the month until you get here. All right. And lastly, the biggest conversation we have, I really don't, you know, want to yell at people. Well, come to the meeting, but read the materials at least before you get to this meeting. So if you have questions and you know, Wow, I didn't get to go to environmental, but I have a question about the federal funding. At least then send an email to the chair of that committee saying, hey, I have a question before full board. Was this answered in the presentation? And they can say yes or no, and you can go back to the presentation and watch it. We're going to try and really make this as a goal for all from next month forward. Okay, and I pulled this out now. Only because our elected officials get to be the ones who start this off with our new abbreviated Richard. 
So what will be the, uh, the goal of when materials will be posted for uh, board members to read? It should be posted 24 hours prior to the week. So they should be posted. Uh, tonight should have been uplined by 6.30 last night. So the day seven, before, 24 hours before, everything should be posted. Yeah. Yeah. And remember, everything is posted as draft. Right. Any other questions? Bob. Sammy, could you repeat what your goal is when the committee gives its report? I heard two minutes for a non resolution, right? Correct. And four minutes for a resolution? No. How I many? It's resolution is a resolution. Okay. You present the resolution. I got it. Ideally, but it's really just about those that have just reports. Two minutes a topic. I got it. Six total. Thank you. Just the highlights. Any other questions? All right. So now we'll go back to the top of the business session. We'll adopt the minutes uh, from October 2024. That is our quorum alert. So hopefully I see enough people in the room, which I'm sure I do. Brendan, take it away. Oh, I have somebody has to, you know, do the call oh, question. So, fantastic. Roll call for a minute, please. Um, start with Emma Reset. Blake. Blake, yes. Uh, Brown Kennedy. Cameron. Cameron, yes. Uh, Cassell. Cassell, yes. Chang. Yes. Chapman. Chapman, yes. Uh, Charcudian. Charcudian, yes. Oh. Oh, yes. Coleman. Uh, Corman. Yes. Yeah. Curtis. Curtis, yes. Herman. Flores. Yes. Glenn. Forsberg. Friedman. Friedman, yes. Froman. Froman. Froman, yes. Galloway. Galloway, yes. Goldstein. Go, Goldstein, yes. Fernandez. Hershad. Hershad, yes. James. Joyce. <laughs> Kay. Yeah. Now? No, yes. Cobo. Oh, yes. Livingston? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Lion? Lion, yes. Melser? Melser, yes. Mansley? Mansley, yes. Moore? Yes. Tanya? Yes. Portoy? Portoy? Robinson? Robinson, yes. Rossi. Scott. Scott, yes. Shear. Star. Jimmy Song. Beer Song. Yes. Terry. Thompson, yes. Tally. Yes. You. Yes. And Zelzer. Right. Myrna, yes. Thank you, Joe. Remember, if you are not here for the roll call vote, when we do the next vote, you need to make sure you announce yourself so you're here on record. So with that, I see uh, we'll go to our elected officials. I see Kevin online. Um, Kevin, you know the new rules and regs, so your Good. timer starts now. Hi, thank you so much, Tammy. I actually don't have many updates on my end. I would just say um, I know everyone is reeling from the election and um, understand that people have a lot of thoughts on that and what's going on. Um, the congressman has been very outspoken about the work that he plans to do over the next four years. Um, but just please know if you have any casework with us, please try and get that done by January 20th or else it may be a little bit slower. 
Um, and I would also just implore everyone to please contact us if you have any issues with federal agencies in the meantime. Otherwise, I am all good to go. I sent my report earlier. Thank you so much for all the work that y'all do on Community Board 1 and for the uh, support on the Congressman's bill from Quality of Life under Chair Moore and Chair Meltzer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions for Tevin? Can I have a quick um, policy question? Um, as you know, President elect Trump has uh, said that he would kill congestion pricing the policy. Um, and I know it's the most popular political kid on the playground, but um, you know, what would uh, or how would the congressman respond to uh, the president's action if he does take that? Make the uh, first of all, can he do it? And what would the congressman do? It just depends on what he means. It just got final approval from the Federal Highway Association. So it's pretty sealed and delivered. It also is going to be implemented at that time. I don't know if he means like, I'm going to make it go through another review or if he means it's very vague. I think it's kind of shooting out in the wind to be very honest with you. Um, once it starts implementation, unless he needs to file a lawsuit against us, that would probably be the first step. But. As of right now, it is moving forward. Any other questions for Tevin? I have one last thing. Tevin, um, yeah. we did share at Borough Board about the Michelle Go Act, and I'm requesting yes. if you can send some more documentation and information so we can share it with the rest of the boards. That would be really awesome. Anything for you. I will have it for you tomorrow morning. Awesome. Thank you very much and have a great Thanksgiving. You too. Thank you, Community Board One. Keep up the great work. Mr. Byers, welcome from Senator Kavanaugh's office. Hey, everybody. Good to see you. Glad to be a part of this new inaugural times system. <laughs> Raising the stakes all over there for us. Uh, I don't really have any updates either. Um, I'm excited. We're planning our next Manhattan Brobish jail construction and demolition meeting for January. The independent monitor just released her first report, which I'm yet to review, but it's exciting that that's finally going. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. I think that I'm working with a lot of you on, on individual projects and we'll, we'll check in. Any questions for Senator Kavanaugh's team? Hearing and seeing none and none on if, if I miss you online, just speak up. All righty. Um, moving along. Thank you very much. Dan. Do I have team from. Assembly member falls. Don't see anybody. Okay, um, we're going to go to Deborah Glick's office. Roy Ruiz. Thank you so much. Roy. Welcome. Thank you. Roy Ruiz from Assembly member Deborah Glick's office. Uh, Assembly member would like to highlight there, there is a drought. Warning still, despite the fact that it rained, as it rained enough to fill up the reservoirs to the region. So, uh, there's a link in our board report to EP's website uh, where they talk about water conservation. Um, last week on Thursday, the assembly member who is chair of the Environmental Conservation Committee hosted a hearing on PF, PFAA, sorry, PFA. Essence. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there's a dead chemicals first developed in the 40s um, that are quite resistant to uh, water or um, over the decades, the assembly of the conservation has tried to um, regulate this uses through, you know, clothes, apparel, food, water, but um, less attention has been given to how these um, chemicals filter back into the environment. So this mm -hmm. hearing is sort of come up with that. And if you want to watch a video, there's a link to it. And lastly, um, if you like to plant or garden, there's also a list for the plants that will help diversify the local environment. So, specifically, so, there's a link to that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for assembly member Brooks team? Hearing and seeing none. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to go to Andrew Chang next. 
Hi, Andrew here from the Admiral Customs Office. Um, quickly, five things I want to quickly mention. One, we're recruiting juniors and seniors for our fellowship program. The application deadline is December 1st. Please reach out to me if you want more information. Um, it's a great fellowship for East uh, High School youth. Second, we're having an event for vets. We call it Vets Take the Met on December 4th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. That's their families, their friends are welcome to attend. Um, we're going to have some um, tours and um, other uh, special events for these veterans. Third, we're having a get, get involved in your local government webinar on December 5th at 5 p.m. Uh, it's for folks who are interested in their local government, they have a local, local community, community, they want to get involved, they want to learn more about community boards, community education councils, um, various other civic boards. Uh, so Thursday, December 5th, 5 p.m. We, we have capital funding again for our schools, nonprofits, city agencies. We have two info sessions, December 10th and December 12th. More information is on our website. Go to the resources tab. And click on um, budget budget funding. You'll see information on capital funding. And then uh, lastly, I believe we're going to just let the last full board meeting to be released. Our senior resource guide is online. We have information on housing, legal assistance, transportation for seniors. Um, go to your resource section on our website for a senior resource guide. That's it. That's it. Okay, fantastic. We have some questions. Richard? Yes, hi, Andrew. Um, last month, I asked you about a report that the borough president put out related to uh, affordable housing opportunities in lower Manhattan, lower Manhattan, and I wanted to know what uh, what follow-up there's been on that report. Yes, I have flagged that for my colleague. I will follow for her and get back to you. Come on, I'll send a message right, with, right after this. Thank you. Okay, other questions for Andrew? I have one. Do you have a new set of community board member training series? And would the borough president consider any kind of format that he could set up that if you watch the training videos and interact with some kind of a survey at the end, that that would be able to count towards your qualifications for having to take the training? Yes, I will inquire about that, especially regarding the three mandated training stuff. Uh, because of bias, equal, equal right. opportunity, and um, conflict of interest. So let me ask, just, just to give you an mm -hmm. idea, how many board members have completed all three within the last 365 days? All three what? Three required, <laughs> right, three required <laughs> community board trainings. <laughs> there are three required community board trainings that you have to take yearly. And so out of 50 members, I have a less than a handful who have been able to. So we asked this the last time around, I'm asking again, there should be an opportunity that if you create a survey with questions that are randomized, that you could watch the video, answer the questions, then you know, you pass the test, you know, or call it in, however you want to do it and be counted for training, that would be really great because then people could do it on their time and still make sure that they get it done. Bob? That's a great suggestion because the Department of Health for abuse and neglect has, you know, you got to do it every two years, I think. And surely, and no disrespect to our president and the conflict of interest trainings, but surely the Department of Health requirements are much more serious. And I would, I would seriously look at Tammy's suggestion because it may help us all move along. Yeah, that's it, right? Desi, yes. <laughs> so I actually just put the conflict of interest training for. The Department of Health, and so do I have to take it again for the board, or no? Does it? I, me as a chair, I would tell you no. You don't need to sit for it twice. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, if I provide um, documentation yeah. of it, send it to me, Zach and Andrew, and let's make sure you can get credit for it. Okay. I can't imagine that you want to sit or have to sit there. Oh, it's quite time. entertaining, that, you know. But I can think of other ways to you that we serve the board better. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? Awesome. Anybody online have any questions? All right. Thank you very much, Andrew. All right. Uh, we are moving on to a new legislative fellow from House Member Marte's office.
So let's welcome. Introduce yourself. Hi everyone. I'm Margaret. I just started at Council Member Martinez office. Um, and I do have a few updates. So as many of you have likely heard, DHS has sent all of the elected officials proposed alternatives for the 320 Pearl Street safe haven site. Councilmember Marte has met with Senator Kavanaugh, Assemblymember Lee, Borough President Levine, Congressman Goldman um, to review these proposals, and they all agree that the DHS proposals don't address the issue. Um, and we have sent a letter rejecting the proposals. Um, we're all working together, um, and we'll continue to keep you updated as we learn more. Um, earlier this month, Councilmember Marte attended a groundbreaking for the new building at the Harbor School on Governor's Island. This expansion will add more classrooms, labs, and a competitive gym and swimming pool, all designed to support the school's maritime curriculum. This is a really exciting development that Community Board 1 has fought for for years, so we're glad to see it moving forward. Um, some legislative updates. Last month, Councilmember Marte introduced legislation to protect the health care of city retirees. Um, Mayor Adams is trying to force hundreds of thousands of retirees off of traditional Medicare and onto Medicare Advantage. Um, and our bill would enshrine in law retirees' right to judicial Medicare, so no mayoral administration can take that away. Um, this month, the City Council passed the FAIR Act, banning landlords from charging <coughs> tenants' brokers fees. Um, Councilor Marte was proud to be one of the earliest co sponsors of that bill that will make housing more affordable. And we thank Councilmember Chiose for his work to get the bill passed. Um, some land use updates on the City of Yes. Last week, the City of Yes for Housing Opportunity passed at the subcommittee and committee levels and is expected to be put for a full vote at the next full council meeting in early December. The council member continues to advocate for changes and commitments that will prioritize construction. Um, and preservation of truly affordable housing. We have seen some movement on our asks around NYCHA property, average unit sizes, and lot coverage requirements, and funding commitments for affordable housing and tenant engagement. However, the council member still has serious concerns about the lack of mandated affordable housing and potential for exacerbating speculation and displacement downtown and citywide. Um, and finally, I think it was mentioned briefly before, but about um, the independent environmental monitor for the jail um, through nonstop advocacy from the council members, CB1, the Chinatown community, and our state and federal electeds. We're finally able to retain Laura Dodge as the independent environmental monitor for the ongoing MDC demolition. She has been getting up to speed with what has happened so far, particularly the dust pollution from the site and impact to the Chung Hak building, and will be crucial to helping protect the community and help the administration. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Jared. Sorry, Mark. Hello. Um, so, to come up with the word. Um, so, the, the state cannabis legislation used to the local municipalities to create distancing requirements between public use facilities and legal cannabis dispensaries. Um, I believe Matt said in a previous meeting that somebody within the city council who's working on this. Due to council rules, there's a element of secrecy that exists um, until that's introduced. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for us to get an update at the next meeting with whether or not there's going to be voter motion? Because that just seems like a very common sense. Is the right question. Yeah, I will write that down and make sure it's that. Awesome. Thank you. Hearing and seeing no other um, things, we have Peter from the district attorney's office. Hi, good evening. I'm Peter Say from the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. A couple updates and announcements. First, last week, we indicted an individual, a building super, for stealing $350,000 from a 100 year old tenant of his building. Uh, the point I'm making this announcement is a horrible thing, but it happens too much. Yes. Our office preaches and and hold education sessions to your groups uh, on the changes of this. So if you have a group or if there's a committee that we, we can talk to you about this, please let me know. We will be happy to arrange that for you. Okay. Next thing, uh, our hate crimes unit, we're going to hold an information session, session, training session called Navigating the Criminal Justice System for API. So very helpful for people in the Lower East Side in the community. This will be on December 5th. Uh, 
I forgot to bring the flyers, but I'll send the flyers to you and Zach, and you can uh, pass it out for us. What time? 8.30 to 12.30. It's virtual. And what time? Finally, uh, I left flyers on the desk. Uh, never too late to start. If you have promising students, high school internships, college fellowships. Uh, we have information sessions now. Applications are due in February. What I'm happy to say is based on last year, the popularity and the interest starting this year, this will only be open to residents of Manhattan. Last year, we were just like, bring them on. So we've got such a good response. Manhattan residents only. Thank you. Any questions? It's not a question. I've said this before. I just want to say it again. That we're down to the, the only clean, wonderful office in, in the city is, 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 is yours. And I'm just so happy. Yeah. Oh, so oh. And and great thing. And you see more Okay. Thank you. Um, to follow that up with a piece of criticism. Um, <laughs> Okay. I have a request for help to go there. So with the caveat that I recognize that it is not solely a prosecutorial issue, it's a broad issue that's impacting the city. But when you see things like what happened last week with the guy who went into stabbing rampage throughout the city, um, I think there's a feeling of helplessness that a lot of people feel. That, that type of thing is happening, maybe not on that scale, but everyday minor versions of that. Um, and it's it's pretty scary. I think it's for a lot of people. I said we'd love to see people get the help they need, and then you know, at the same time, when they are committing more minor offenses that are you know, so, you know, going untreated and falling through the cracks, that there being any actual you know, prosecution can lead to it to prevent these things from happening. Awesome. What was your name? Jared. Jared. Okay. Is there any time to make all these? Uh, well, let me answer Jared. Okay, Jared, what happened last week was just heartbreaking. Okay. The defendant, we practiced case. He had he has been prosecuted uh, for all his crimes. What you read in the press, we rolled up his. He was a burglar. He was arrested at four different crimes. We rolled it up. We offered him diversion. His defense team turned it down. So we were able to prosecute, and he got a year in jail. Served his year, came out right afterwards. Mm -hmm. It happened. Okay. It's not for lack of prosecution for the crimes he did. Before this, his crimes were burglary. Okay. And we offered the uh, diversion, the treatment, but when he came out of jail, when he came out of Rikers, the violence happened. So in that case, yes, we feel the same way, but wherever possible, uh, we do conditional prosecution. But if you've heard me come and speak over the past year, in cases where we're not able to prosecute, uh, we're offering, we're trying to introduce other Treatments, but we're not alone in this. You've heard me talk about our neighborhood navigators, all right, over and over again. They're deployed now to try and help people with substance abuse issues, mental health issues. It's our part of what we can do. All right. So, my last comment and question uh, and request for help we, we have a resolution tonight that's from Quality of Life that involves. DCWP and the oath hearings, and there was a large conversation with NYPD looking for both rule change and legislative change to how uh, tour third party ticket sellers operate and what they're held accountable for and to. Um, there have been enough in the media, it has resumed back to a level. No one's looking to put people in jail for trying to work, but we are looking to make sure that everybody has access to the park. 
and that there's not it's not harassing the people who live, work, or visit, and that there's uh, not fraudulent activities happening, and you know scams being perpetrated on tourists. And part of it, we had um, included everything from a really robust education campaign, kind of think about the tourist who gets off, and now everywhere you look, there's a sign that says, you know, you can't from the four higher vehicles don't just get into a car it's illegal to just poach people for example at the airports we want some kind of an education system and we're going to ask that the district attorney's office work with oath and work with dcwp and nypd to really provide really good change because this is just not a tenable situation for how we need to treat people trying to get on a ferry go to special liberty and don't get there Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 he won't be here. He's leaving. Okay. Cool. Um, just take it. Take the topic later after we vote tonight. Absolutely. Well, I apologize that I couldn't come last Thursday. That was community board two I went to, but I've been following up with yeah. you and Zach about this. Our office is aware. Whatever role our office can play in this, maybe perhaps two things before I jump ahead of myself. Uh, from what I've been advised, what I've been reading up on, on this case, there's been violence involved. That's where we would have to get involved, all right, if the cases we've heard. So we need to, you know, some help to know about this, because a stabbing is bad enough. A stabbing as a result of this action uh, is something that we, we need to put more attention to. I'm big since I've been working with and hearing about it. I had a call over the weekend from a friend. He's coming in tomorrow to see the Thanksgiving parade. Yeah. Wednesday, she's going to see the Statue of Liberty. When they then. I suggest you accompany to them. <laughs> no. Experience it yourself. That's all. No, no. I'm, I'm uh, sending her the clips that you sent me. Yeah. Well, I know the district attorney's been very involved in closing down illegal dispensaries um, mm -hmm. and uh, prosecuting. But I want to take it to another level. Um, Gummies, which are sold in legal dispensaries, uh, can create anxiety, not in everybody, but it can create a lot of anxiety. I have a background in some of this, and uh, gummies should be illegal. Um, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these violent offenders um, are withdrawing from uh, uh, heavy doses of cannabis. I don't support um, making it illegal. But I do know that it is it does affect certain people in certain ways, and gummies are not were never a diversity issue. It was not people. It was never a diversity issue uh, where people were getting arrested for selling gummies on the streets of New York. So I don't know. I'm just shooting my mouth off. But um, you know, Bob, yeah. I have a question for you. Uh, okay. Yeah. Bernard, go ahead. I'm just saying that is there any study related to, for example, the shoplifting? It has reduced. Because we look at from 2009 to now, you still have CBS, QNV, everything to lock up, you know. And I think it's a, probably a result of you know, shoplifting. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if this is the responsibility of the police officer. No, we're a part of it. May answer that and then we can move on. Uh, our office is working with NYPD trying to address this issue. We've held many sessions just recently over the past two months. Uh, healthy stores uh, learn to best practices for trespass while notices so that a store can say, if, you're in, if you go into a CBS and, and you steal, they they will they have the ability to issue a trespass notice saying you're not allowed in this premises anymore. And if they come back and they commit a crime, the next time it gets upgraded to a felony on this. So we've had two or three committee sessions. We'll continue to do that. The lead person, not CBS per se, but Walgreens, yeah, Target, uh, they've been participating with their law prevention. And what also helps is. Target has had recently a change in the policy where they're engaging now before they had a hands off policy. And they sort of lead the way. So hopefully that will help. Thank you. All righty. Uh, hearing and seeing no one else uh, 
Thank you very much for, you, for the time to come. Thank I appreciate you. it. Well, um, I got a note from Robin Force from the mayor's office. She'll be here at 715. So I think what we may do is um, go to Grace Lee's office. Thank you very much. And then hopefully Robin. Thanks everybody. Um, I'm Sebastian. I'm somebody for Danny and Jerry. You guys know her from the Battery. Um, she's the recent hire as well. Um, just a couple of updates real quick. I won't drag this towards any further, but you know the Chinatown uh, revitalization project, as well as the independent monitor. Um, you know, for the third time, our office has especially been very invested in it, as well as uh, your other representatives who the office, um, visit the center, Kavanaugh's office, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as Margaret mentioned already, but like you know, the program proposal was rejected. We signed on to that letter with um, their with their office as well. Um, we also recently signed on to a uh, letter to the Department of Labor. Um, essentially calling out uh, forms of wage staff that were currently going on in the district, um, especially in Chinatown, but across New York City. Um, and that was along in conjunction with the summer member Ron Kidd, as well as um, a couple of other uh, representatives signed on to it, like the council member Chris Monte. Um, as for stuff we've been doing, uh, one of the major things is just uh, currently update, trying to update our API curriculum uh, bill. Essentially, just trying to standardize the teaching of API history, culture, et cetera, in middle school and high school, especially, um, which has been meeting with a couple of uh, community partners, as well as making sure that there's actual revenue funds available for each school to be able to do this, especially in the future um, next four years, at least, under a potential administration that would not be giving as much funding. Um, as for other work we've been doing, um, we're working currently with a couple of other offices. To have new and updated guidelines on one cracking down on fake license plates and two updating ID laws. Uh, one of the main things we want to do is actually work with the city to have updated reporting systems for ID to make it easier for uh, constituents, residents, etc., to be able to report. Um, I guess just instances of ID, uh, mainly working with uh, the DNC as well as potentially uh, the city council. Um, and an app is in the works. We have a couple, a lot of ideas, and we'll probably report back to you guys. Um, when the legislative cycle is actually ongoing. Um, as for recent things that we've done, um, we're proud to announce, I guess, that we've handed out over 3,000 turkeys, chickens, <laughs> and tortillas um, with different uh, NYCHA tenant associations as well as Vision Nirvana. Our biggest one was actually on Saturday, where I think we gave out 2,000. Um, 2,000 turkeys? 2,000 turkeys, chickens, and tortillas. Um, right across the Smith houses, yeah. um, the 70 PA, if you guys know what that is, um, at Cold Deuce Park. Um, that's yeah, I, I won't list off all the buildings. And finally, in the summer, we're just gonna be having uh, toy drives. So, we're currently having one with um, the setting houses um, on December 6th. But if you live in our district and happen to, especially uh, live in Night Show, we're currently trying to partner with the TAs to have those uh, be just common occurrences for the kids, for families, and share everybody has. Um, nice best thing next season. Um, but if there's any questions, you can reach out to me here afterwards. So thank you. Pat, I don't how think you're waiting. How can we donate? To the toy drive? Mm -hmm. um, just reach out to our office. I think we can use plenty of departments I can do. We can get it from Zach. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, just reach out to us. Yeah, we'll, we'll That's your time, time for me. I'm sorry. Okay, any other quick questions? Yeah. Jared. Um, so this has come up before with um, your other colleagues who come at this point with this uh, meeting a lot, but as it relates to the distance requirement between dispensaries and school, yeah. this is something that um, is still a mess at the OCM uh, in that the law says one thing, the regulations say something else, they've introduced new regulations that don't exactly follow the law. They asked for public comment almost six months ago. There's been no response to the public comment, but they are still using the standard that has not actually been enacted yet. Uh, as they're making these determinations, they also released a map recently that includes some schools that otherwise wouldn't actually qualify under the end definition, but they're using it on their map as a way to prohibit structures from opening, but they're not applying it uniformly. How do we get some, if you run this back to your office, how do we get some activity on this, some actual action that brings a priority for all of us? I, I think the, the thing I'll say though is that, like, um, I, I would actually broke in, you just reached out to our office and speaking to Betty. I should be doing a lot of this work. However, I will say, um, I think this is being done kind of in ways, right? Over the summer, we actually did a lot of uh, shutdowns with the sheriff's office. I'm talking about legal. 
Oh, legal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah, no, I think legal expenses. It's, 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 if you can bring that back, because it's just, it, this has been going on. For okay, yeah. I'll be sure you're all out. And even if it's public one. Okay, sorry. But you were talking about just okay. continue the legal expenses. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Hearing and seeing none others online. Thank you so much for coming. Do tell Penny she was missed. Um, with that, we're done with our updates from elected Wait. officials. Um, Robin will be here. We'll slaughter in for her three minutes when she arrives in room or two if she's online. Zach, take her away. District manager's report. Okay. So the fund for the city of New York uh, planning fellowship program. Uh, as you might remember, I passed around this information a few months ago to try to uh, come up with some projects um, to get fellows. Uh, the board uh, applied for three projects and we actually got two of them. So we had two fellows um, this year, which was really exciting. Mm -hmm. The last fellow we had was in 2020. Um, so these are our two uh, fellows, Leah Barazani, she's from Hunter. Her project is uh, surveying CB1 permeable spaces and uh, protecting the privatization of public space. And uh, Alice submitted this project. Yeah, if I can just clarify, that's a quite a, it's an actual assessment of public space, looking to expand wherever we can public space, and in that also looking very carefully at where we have infringements in public space, private mm -hmm. like example of privatization. And I just want to ask if each and every one of you would be good enough to consider this project and in your own neighborhoods or areas that you've seen, areas where you could imagine a closed street, for example, an enlarged area for a parklet, things like that, and to then email it to Zach and to me so that she can start to look at these spaces and also examples where you clearly see privatization, if you will, or takeover of public space. It'd be really helpful to her. She has till April, so it's not a long time. She's extremely bright, very hardworking. It's a great, great opportunity for us. And at the end of the day, we'd like to see three or four areas that we might consider for an expansion project like Barnett Newman, like Gotham Park, that sort of idea. Additionally, I have a list, an ongoing list of Infringement areas that have to be reviewed by the different city agencies with oversight to, cl to clear out whatever should be on in a public space and to keep it accessible. So, public space access, please email us. You can think of anything. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you, Alice. Yeah. The other uh, that fellow is David Ledwig, and, uh, and he's from Pratt, and his project is working on um, East River Park Trust and his. Mentors and the submitters of this project are uh, Tammy and uh, with help from Michael Kramer, so they'll be overseeing um, that project. And David did a 16,000 step tour today. He started at the Battery Maritime Building with Michael, and they walked all the way up the entire east side to 14th Street to give him an idea of the scope and scale of what we're talking about. Whether you call it a trust, an alliance, um, whatever, and acronyms and alphabet soups you want to use, that's what he's going to be studying. And hopefully he'll be able to get us uh, one step closer to realizing somebody who can truly advocate and push for the entirety of the space for public benefit. Uh, I'm sorry about these shout outs, but I have to give a shout out to Alice. Um, it's been a quarter of a century that we have tried to reel it back to but I mean, a quarter of the same really literally i remember everything and many of the principles like frank stella and and at least again but alice now has taken up the mantle it looks like something's going to happen which is well thanks awesome. Bruce. thank you for the shout out and you'll be hit up for a little <laughs> for something so right. anyway, thank you that Good. keep going great so if anyone would like to connect with any of these Fellows, I'm sure they would love to, you know, spend some time interviewing you if you want to talk about um, any of these projects. Young people interested in um, government is interested in community. Um, always uh, helpful for other people to connect to help bring them up and, and help in their learning experience. And at the end in April, they will uh, have completed reports and we'll have them uh, present to all of us. Okay, next slide. Okay, so some scheduling changes for next month. Um, 
So the full board is moved to Thursday the 19th, which is up a week uh, early. Um, executive committee will not meet. Battery Park City committee will also not meet. And the EPC committee um, are, are asked to attend the Seaport workshop meeting. Um, and on the next slide, you can see the details for that. The Seaport Coastal Resilience uh, Community Workshop. Uh, so, in lieu of your meeting, please attend uh, that meeting, and it is at uh, Peck Slip School at 630. And yes, your attendance at that meeting will count towards your attendance for your committee meeting for the month of December. So, it's not a, gee, good, I don't have a meeting, I don't have to go. It is your attendance will be counted if you show up at that meeting. All right, let's roll. Uh, one last thing, I just want to note that I have been uh, now in this position for one year. So wow. I'm one so I'm, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Tammy and Alice for your leadership and uh, committee chairs and, and all of you as I got up, got up to speed and uh, have learned a lot about the community and um, how all you guys do work. So I want to thank you for um, Letting me serve at the pleasure of the board this past year. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. It's been a busy month. I can't wait for it to slow down. <laughs> um, I want to thank Netta for going to the SBPCR percent for art program, um, which we tapped her on the shoulder to go two days before. So I really appreciate it. I want to thank Betty and Francis who attend the Lower Manhattan Community Advisory Board for the hospital. Um, I want to thank Trisha Joyce, who went to the Harvard School groundbreaking, and um, Alice for always being my backup at every meeting that we have to go to. So um, if you feel you might have some extra time at any points, and I have meetings, I'm really happy to let other people go every now and then. So, um, and here's my lighted up slides from the month. And if you could just tell basically on the left, there's a Statue of Liberty out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next, I went over these. So if you weren't here before, you know now, be prepared for next month. Upcoming, hot off the presses, we know congestion pricing. A new operator has been announced for Pier 6 at the heliport. They start in, Jan in 2025 in January, which includes helicopter taxis. We haven't heard very much about this yet. So we did ask EDC and Gigi is talking to Zach about having them come. Mm -hmm. December is a very busy month for transportation, so I'm not really sure if maybe we need to put them at land use or somewhere, but stay tuned. We're going to find a way to have them come in December so that they could truly hear what the community feels about. Yeah. That we know the health pad's not going anywhere, but uh, electric and quieter and blue highways are all things that we've talked about that we've been told. We don't know if they're doing it. Okay. Uh, new tour dates for 48 Wall. Susan will remind you. Zach already went over those things. We expect on the agendas them to be fairly robust. Um, and here, 99% we're going to get a Brooklyn Bridge Arch Public Space Update and Plaza Partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I hear I hear that that's there. Um, if you've been following them on. Uh, social media, which I hope you do, you'll see some really cool pictures and it's open and it's a great ad for the neighborhood. 10 South Street has gotten back to us midtown equities for the Battery Maritime building. They are looking to come and talk to us about their public access agreement. So we'll find time for them hopefully in December. Friday Seaport Master Plan, um, they should be coming back in January. So what we're going to do in December for some fantastic holiday reading, and I know you all really want to read up on this, is send, make sure that you have the last and most current up-to-date information. I'm going to ask you to really take a look because the news and the updates that they have are real, you know, Pier 15 going away, adding a Pier 19, Post Guard sites in play, Pier 6 is moving up and down, walling in the Battery Maritime. All of those conversations that become finalized at the 30% design cannot be changed. So the time to say something, if you have an opinion or a thought or a concern or a suggestion or kudos, will be in the next 60 to 90 days. I can't underline that enough. 
Um, first person community council meeting is on Monday the 9th. And then we are planning a CD1 holiday potluck in 2025 in January. We need volunteers. Francis and Pat well, have done it for a long time. Anybody else want to? If we're doing the potluck, then we'll just have a list of people have to sign up for what they're bringing. We used to do it at a nice restaurant. It's hard to find something that's budget friendly yeah. in CD1 these days. Yeah. Um, so we may be back to potluck. The last time we potlucked, it was at Bob's. So, was that the last one? That was the last Let's one. Not use that word pot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's, it's it's available. So, thank you everybody. Uh, Thanksgiving. One of the reasons we moved the meeting to the two today was so everybody could have more time with their loved ones and people travel. Yes, um, that is a familiar face. I had been a balloon handler, <laughs> so it's like the many hats that you wear. That's one of the hats that I wore one year. Um, at the parade, it's a great experience. I'm sorry, it's gonna rain this year, but enjoy your time with your families. Thank you so much for the service that you provide to the community. It is not easy, but greatly appreciated. And with that, I close my chair report. Let's hit resolutions. That's me. All right, so and I don't see Robin yet. Does anybody see Robin before we get rolling in this? Yeah, I'm pulling in stop. I am here. Okay, Robin. Hi. Hi everybody. Uh happy Thanksgiving. Uh forgive my lateness. I um am between two other meetings. So I just really want to say hi. Wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. As everybody knows, we uh have a new police commissioner and it's a very exciting um, to have Jessica in this role. She's spent 12 years uh, in various roles at the police department and has done a, an amazing job at the Department of Sanitation. And we look forward to her uh, continuation of success at NYPD. Uh, the parade is Thursday, as Tammy mentioned. Unfortunately, it's supposed to rain, but a good time may be had by those who bring umbrellas. And uh, with that, I will say see you next month. Enjoy your holidays, families, friends, and good food. Does anybody have any questions for the mayor's office community affairs unit? Alice? Can, can you, I don't know, can you just give us any information on the $5 billion expense of being budgeted now for affordable housing and getting a gas plans? Is that something that you know anything about? Um, it's something I don't know very much about, and it's something I will circle back with you on. Thanks. Okay. We would love to hear that at land use. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay. Anybody else have anything for Robin? Okay. With that, Robin, thank you much. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Yep. Happy holidays. First resolution, bus ticket tour licenses. Anybody have any questions? Anybody online have any questions? Okay. Call the oh. Well, <laughs> that's it. Here's it. Here's it. No. Okay. So we'll go that way. Let's go. All right. So this is a vote by affirmation, which means are there any no's? Hearing and seeing none, are there any abstentions? Hearing none and seeing none, are there any refusals? Motion passes unanimously. Yeah, to have I vote by yes. Ah, uh, was there anybody who missed roll call to start with? So you must say your name and your vote. Uh, on this resolution. On yes. this resolution. Mr. Chairman, uh, I vote yay. Yes. Yeah. Anybody else oh. in the room? Is there anybody who joined us online who missed roll call? Trisha. And Wendy. I'm sorry. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, I can, but you, you need to have your, your camera up there. You're just, okay, great. And if Trisha is on. Trisha is on. So I was here for roll call. I thought I, I thought you heard me. Sorry. That's okay. Gotcha. Trisha, are you there? I don't see her picture. She may be working. So let's, let's count her when she comes back. Don't worry. 
Um, okay, with that, here's a question before we go. Um, how, how do people feel about taking all of the cannabis and the DHS rule change in one vote? So, did I get a motion to call the question? Oh, motion. Second. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Are there any? Right. Are there? Um, this, we're is gonna do a and what else? this is for all the cannabis. So, yeah. 381, 176, and 345, all three of those. Mm -hmm. And the Department of Homeless Services rule change. Mm -hmm. Which is the public comment one. And that's it. That's everything for example. Call the question. Uh, yeah, it was called. It was seconded. So sure. voting by affirmation. Thank you so much. Are there any abstentions to any of those resolutions? Brown Kennedy abstention. 381. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any no's? Oh, An opposition. Are there any recusal? Okay. All, Desi makes it so. All motions have passed. All right. Um, my report on the court ruling for the closing stores. They're still closing stores. So we just keep reporting. That's my report. All right. You might need to take it outside. Yeah. Right. And we're gonna. Uh, could I? Could I? We're gonna. We're gonna put public comment in for the two things. Um, the thousand foot waiver will be submitted yes. by before December 2nd, as well as the huh. DHS public comment. That's right. Uh, yes, Morton. Um, on the store closing, uh, the cannabis uh, store closing, mm -hmm. it seems like some of the uh, stores that were closed are looking to uh, reopen. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I don't think we, um, I forget what high society on. Uh, it's not open. Report it. It's, it's not open, but it looks the like lights are the on. lights are on. They've been on every night. Oh, well, I would if they're. I walk by. I live in that down the street. Um, okay, take that off to the side to decide for yourself. <laughs> 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 I don't see that it is open. Then please report it and send the numbers to Zach. Anybody have anything else? <laughs> yes. Hi. Uh, can you be backing on that. Somebody comment, must be paying uh, the electric bill. Yeah, we need to. So. Backing on that comment, I was curious: is there a sort of increase in scale of penalty for landlords that actually? What is that increase in scale? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but it is in the legislation, and I highly suggest you connect <coughs> with either Brandon or Jared, who are two cannabis. I'm walking down the street and start to occur mm -hmm. a month later, mm -hmm. they're back right back up again. So obviously whatever you want is hard. You just have to keep reporting them. And then when you report it, send it to Okay. And make sure you there's there's a difference between cannabis stores and smoke shops. Yeah. So I've noticed that many have opened up at smoke shops, which my guessment is that they're selling from the back of cannabis, but in the front is a smoke shop, which is legal. Which is not legal because there are no valid license, new licenses for smoke shops in lower Manhattan. And if you need the list, we have a list in the office of the valid smoke shops. You may not open a new smoke shop in lower Manhattan because we are over, we are over the number that was grandfathered in and one of us. And I know that all, a lot of these shops are legal, but <coughs> an age limit for stomach? I mean, I know they're legal to begin with. So what so is true? Like 21 or 21. Because, I mean, I'm horrified, but there are high school students smoking up literally every day. Take a picture, report it. Those kind of reports get faster. I'll take a picture. I'll take a picture. Okay. Oh, okay. No, no, like there's, there's, I don't know where they're getting it. You can't, you can't help that. Yeah. All right. That's just two meters. Yeah, that's, that's. <laughs> yeah, but they could be getting in the home. You know, like All right. With that, let's keep moving on. As if you need a uh, sir. All right. Uh, we're going uh, Daron, Charcutian, and then after Daron is Susan. Hey, good evening, everyone. We received a report from our street fair promoter, Joe Giovanni, uh, on, 
on the revenue uh, generated for CB1 sponsored street fairs from 2024. That number was 21,500, which is about the same as last year, it might be slightly down. Uh, and then he also gave us a projection for next year. The increase projects, uh, the, the projection increases to 33,000, but much of that increase is, is from a proposed holiday fair, which we have not been able to do the last, this year and last year. So. It may, it's very it's 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 possible that we could end up with about the same amount of money from CB1 sponsored street fairs and 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 one one block of it. Um, <clears throat> completes my report. Have you taken any questions or comments? Thank you. Seeing none, pass it back to the chair. You're on the man. <laughs> okay, Susan. Uh, okay, so in your packet you have the first three uh, sidewalk cafe licenses. Um, there are two. Uh, 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 oh no, I find this like tied up in my underwear. That's what I feel yeah. like when I read all the news. They're just one thing is no better than the other, and it's sidewalk cafe or is it roadside park, uh, roadside <laughs> road bed or whatever. So the first, uh, um, the first one is for laughing man. And we get them after the DOT has approved them. So I want you all to understand that. We we get this, the one with the drawing comes after DOT. Alex knows it better than I do. Uh, um, they've been approved by DOT. So it's almost a slam dunk for us, except for ours and a variety of things in terms of what they were originally uh, uh, licensed as. So you have Laughing Man, and it's a side cafe permit for outside the premises, and it's now no longer considered public seating. It's now part of the dining out program, and that's why you have it in front of you. Um, are there, if, I'm going to take them all at once. Go, Jess. I'm, I'm just wondering, like, because that, like, Laughing Man is in the road, but it's considered sidewalk cafe. Yes. Do you know? No. What you're no. Roadway, roadway. Sorry, I said it wrong. Yeah. It doesn't have to be gone in a week. Like it does. It does. November thirtieth, and then it will be for the November thirtieth. All yeah. roadways yeah. that right. all that roadways must be gone. But it is, Jess. You're right. Yeah. Sorry, but it comes <laughs> back. I hate them all. Next year yeah. it comes April. back next year in April. April. And but March, they're all out of Bruce, so um, I'm looking at the map. It was controversial to begin with. Yes, yeah. took a lot of space. Yeah, and the soft part was that it was also public street. Yeah. So that that was the trade-off. That's yeah. correct. Now, and they're still no. I assume you're not adding space, but you're changing the usage. Right. 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 So it's a ritual now. You can't sit down there unless you are feeding yourself at right. five. Right. 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 Oh, that's correct. Right. It's it's, it, it's like because it's a highbrow, ostensibly highbrow establishment, they get to do that, and someone like Madeline Lanciani at at, at Blaine Park Patisserie gets hassled all the time for our two little shoes. Uh, it's just not right. I agree with you. Yes, yeah, but, but she had a big hassle. Uh, she did, she got it, but it was a, a pain in the neck. Right. And they've always been, but they seem yeah, to have been. made uh friends i don't know right. yes they uh, think they're they better are. than they were at the beginning the, we were, at the beginning yeah they, they, they thought they should, uh, new york street that's Glen street right <laughs> yeah what is new york street yeah i thought that was well, yeah, yeah i thought so too yeah, that, that, it's, that, they even know the map maker what they're talking about well but that's what i find so fascinating is that dot no, said it was okay <clears throat> and i just think going forward and uh, uh, for all of these, and I think the committee is going to do it. We're just going to make them be more specific. I don't care what DOT said. We provided drawings that are exactly what the DOT has requested, and yet they're not followed. In other words, they have very specific drawing requirements. You don't have to do this in computer day design, and you don't have to be an architect to draw them. Right. Yet they don't follow, and it's yeah. very suspect. And, um, That's Bruce, so cool. and Bruce has raised an incredibly important point. Which is that, and people should remember this: that in the in the past there was something called street seats, right. which took over. That's right. Correct. And that's what they had. They were one of the took first over people. car parking spaces right. with the idea of allowing the public, right, hold on, to use them when a restaurant faced onto it. And so that was 
public idea that a restaurant would get the advantage of having people go into it and sort of look like it, they owned it, but it wasn't. In fact, it was for the public. It's supposed to be This is now right. gone. It's a program, from what I understand. Right. Nothing has replaced it except for the privatization right. of two public parking spaces. So when you vote for this and a million others that will come before us, you have to ask yourself, is this the best use of that space? Are there other things at a particular location that might be better? Could it be used for something else like a parklet, which is one of the ideas that I know, you know, it's not something popular in New York City yet, but certainly exists in other cities. So just have to really ask yourself that. And that's all. Okay. Just to make sure. So, so but I, I, told I, I have a suggestion because we're not going to debate parklet. The law is that they can take it. Right. There is no more of the public seating. We can do a resolution and licensing can take it up or land use can take it up. Whoever wants to take it up about diversifying the use of the streets. So it is not solely for restaurants that there are other opportunities for others. Just remember there's pros and cons to everything, because if you say it's for others, then every sidewalk sale, every art gallery, et cetera. I think we should. But it's a topic to discuss. I think we should discuss it, and it should be discussed, Patrick, at land use. I think it's a better use than at licensing. But And I would participate, but I, I think it should be dealt with in some way, some kind of a resolution. The more I think about it, that we should at least go on record as spaces being usurped all the time. Okay? Well, the, the, the reason that it even got started was because of COVID and small restaurants and them needing space to have a business and the city felt sorry and it's like, okay, and, and we, we saw there was some uh, uh, restaurants that got whole corners and they had a lot of space inside. And then there's these little teeny places that only had like two seats. So it's very, it's not very equal, but I think Let's that we need bring to bring that to passion to land you. No, we need and to. The one thing that I do want licensing to take up though is if you're not happy with the way these come to you. Oh, no, we're going to. Don't then, worry. Then you need. Alice to, triggered it for me. Resolution. Don't worry. That we share up at borough board to I mean the MC is a professional agency. Uh, they should uh, they should all look professional. They should not be hand drawn. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Well, 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 like all right. So the next two going quickly uh, are done very well. Well, I'm sorry. Question about this one. It's really a follow up yeah. to Alice's comment. Alice, are you suggesting for the reasons that you were the issues that you were just describing that you're going to vote no on this resolution no or are you, it's oh, that's a good question i mean i mean that's you know, well, thing. You know I, I did i this particular one i know well and yes it's as we well, thought was thinking it out earlier on even when it was being public seating i had questions about equity in terms of the other restaurants lanciani you know she was concerned so i, I would say i might abstain here but just because I don't know enough about what other people in the neighborhood would or would not, but by law he can have this. So you know the way I would say, okay. But I think yes, it, 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 in certain circumstances where it might be nice to a theater or a clothing store that love to have use that space, that came up during the question. Like, it's a little more yeah. narrow than that. Okay, it's, sorry, it has, yes, it's yes, balancing please. between your <laughs> general advice on these versus. A fundamental objection to this particular. What would you one. suggest? Well, I'm not suggest. I'm asking for advice, basically. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, if we vote no, I mean, are we getting anything in return for voting yes? Are we all offering hours? Are we getting anything in return? Well, on this one, no. We the hours when they agreed to have hours. Thank you. Every roadbed is the same question, which is. You could use that for something else. Uh, yeah. The hours are the same. Yeah. The, the, okay. the hours were six to six. Yeah, so the hours were not normal licensing yeah. where we get stipulations and whatever. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was we could like we couldn't think of anything, okay. you know. That's fine. Uh, 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 and and I um, I'm still don't know whether it's the same as SLA. If we say no. Is, is DOT going to still approve it? My sense is that's going to win. 
They they push it to a public hearing. That's so going to be the day of the when it goes to uh, so yeah, a second reason for saying no. Yeah, and then what's not at this? Other be. than I Jared, think that's the best solution. Jared, <laughs> just a quick thing. One on this particular location. Yeah, it is very heavily used by the community. Have yeah. you received? Complaints in the past, and then I, I don't see why I would stand in the way. And the other thing I would say is, we have not just in general in talk of use of the roadway and whatnot. There's are some times we're talking about the demolition of all the dining structures. Mm -hmm. They talked about something that no, I, mean, I didn't think about that much. They talked about the fact that they had, you know, one restaurant they interviewed had 70 less chips to give out that employees, so they were going to have to, you know, have to think about that. yeah. I think it's a whole other discussion. Mm -hmm. I mean, th this, we have the three in front of us and um, other than laughing man that, that for some of us sticks in our craw to some degree because of the prior issues, but it seems to be uh, uh, an amenity for the community still that that aspect of it. But now I don't know what's going to happen to the to the roadway. Bruce, I want to answer that, that in fact we did get a concession that is now being taken away, and you're and we're saying apparently that it's legal to do so, but I want it on the record. That they conceded public usage when we gave them at the time mm -hmm. the extraordinary use. And secondly, in response to Jared's comment, there is no outdoor um, service. This is this is either you eat inside or you take your food outside. So no one is losing their job, no, no, whether it's there or not. Okay. I want to say something in in, uh, in laughing Tim's favor. He said that he would still allow uh, a community seating, sure. that he okay. would do that. Yeah, right. Whether he will or not, you know, yeah. a, a chess, yeah. but that's a token, but he did say, yeah. I'm giving him a break. Okay. All right, so you have, you have so 10 more. Maybe. Can we do them all three yeah. one? No, okay. no, no, we can't, because I have a question. Okay. Okay. All right, so yeah. let's do this one. Betty, you have a question? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear. He was taken away by DOT. Did not they yes, saying DOT changed the rule. Right. Yeah. They didn't take it away. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So, can I have a call to question? And is second? it for all three? No, yeah. because Alex can't can tell me. But can't you discuss the other one and then we can oh, Okay, okay. fine. Yeah, I, all right, so uh, let's go to the second, which is Benvenuto. I want you to just go to page two, be, uh, turn it over or whatever. The hours are wrong, and so we have to, I don't know whether I have to do a friendly amendment, what I have to do. The hours are 12 p.m. to 12 a.m., not 12 a.m. to 12 a.m. No, that's, that's fine. <laughs> Just say it was a typo. They were 24 hours out there. They're not, they're not. They're not. Yeah, I agree with you. They're not. 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 This is very specific. 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. Yeah. And then the area that's in the front seat gets crossed out. Yes. Well, no, it's the same area. That's what they asked. So I what's crossed out, Tammy? I don't know. Hold up. up. They asked for 24 hours a day. No, oh, no, no, no. It was a mistake. It was they on the application. Oh, we said no. 12 to 12, 12 a.m. to 12. We said no. I said we we said no. Nothing no. was said about it. I thought it was so. It's What's our what? fault. Wait a minute. It's our I fault. Put that in there. Thank you, Ernest. Because they have to we, close at midnight. That's right. the law. Right. That's the law. They have to close at midnight. Right. So, so I thought it was an error on their part. So as Ernest says, we didn't really acknowledge it. So do I have to make a friendly amendment, the parliamentarians, and That's say an just what? I want to amend the hours. Second amendment. Oh, I want to amend the hours. 
Thank you. They don't have to approve it. Oh, no, because it's also a it's, 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 it's illegal. It doesn't work. Hey, it's, it's an error. It's a medical error. Mr. Amarissa, welcome to the meeting. Thanks. Make sure right. you announce their last name in the vote. All right. So that one is that's uh, the, that one is okay. that. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is Maman Tribeca. I have a question about that. Please. Right. And for anyone who knows about it, maybe you got this, Betty, but I don't understand the bike lane and its relationship to uh, the two, to the um, roadway cafe. Um, you can, I mean, I've sat in them, including this one, where there's a bike lane and you have actual you know, motorbikes which are going up and down. Mm -hmm. And you think, is the waiter going to live through the experience of getting your yeah, yeah, yeah. top salad? Yeah. And I think that that's that that's is actually top. legal entirely. Yes. 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 Yeah, and a baby, yes. I cannot find it in the guidelines. So if somebody no, no. That, but they changed the state law. Well, they, somebody could do it. So again, somebody yeah. like yes, or Betty. Saying, but I don't it, get it. Makes no, it makes yes. no sense. Yes. Please and Betty send that to Alex. Yeah, so the send it to everybody. It's in the DOT guidelines. Yeah, it's, it's dangerous. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, but it's there. It's really crazy. Okay, that was one. So fine. And and then the whole idea that you're supposed to have an emergency lane next to the roadway cafe. The idea here is that the emergency lane would simply just be on the roadway next to the cafe. Yeah. To the, to the no, cafe. the emergency lane is behind the outdoor dining. Yes, it's part of the regular yeah, the street. Yeah, yeah, the street. Street. The street. It makes it's absolutely absurd. Absolutely. Okay. Recall the whole Okay. Thank you. It's on the, I'm sorry. On the third round, isn't the hours Monday to Friday, 7 30 p.m. to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah, that is a bike box. I just want to make other, one other thing, Susan. Yes. yes. Hold on, can we finish the one oh, thing? Sorry. She brought up, I think it was 7 30 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. 8, 8. a.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah. 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 They're opening at 7 30 in the morning. Yeah. A.m. to 6 p.m. Right? I'll, I'll, I'll have to check. I'll have to check to see if it's 7 30. No, I think it was 8. It was the 7 30. Eight to eight, Friday and Saturday. Oh, Were there eight. any residents who live above this building? That oh yeah, oh yeah. Seven thirty in the morning for outdoor dining. And it's road a popular breakfast spot. It's yes, thank you, Jess. Okay. Well, hold on. We'll confirm. That's not there. Yeah, no, it's right there. <laughs> okay. I just had one other thing. Yeah. Wait. Just, I think it's really critical that in the committee, you are very clear, and this came up with Odeon evidently, um, that they are, have a sidewalk cafe and a roadway cafe. I mean, this is double taking of mm -hmm. private. Well, they're two different applications. I understand, I understand it's legal. Yeah. No, 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 it's two different applications. No, no, right. it's two, two different, different applications. applications. And I just wanna make sure that somewhere in our paperwork in county assures me that's there that we have asked and clearly know that they have got this is or have asked for two. We're not there yet. That's for December. I'm just saying, and, and they are there. And different so times. We know if the we restaurant do. we're looking at has both. We do. Because if to bring out into your point, Jared, except yes, it's it's the public, the public, except yes, man. Jared, to your point. The spaces that we're talking about are entirely public spaces that are being privatized. We now have to pay to sit or stand in them. So that's the main thing. Did we both? Did we both? Did we both? Did we both? Um, well, I don't think it's so early. It doesn't seem to be a problem. I mean, we wouldn't have any complaints or anything. And it's very popular, Eric. Can I call the question? Yes. Yeah. The question has been called. And this is for and seconded. 184 Dwayne. No, all three. No, we're not doing all three. No, yeah, we are. Yes, we are. I thought she said, yeah. we don't have three. Yeah. So y'all better slow it down now. I'm sorry. All right, so for all three, um for what do you do you uh so we're gonna do vote by affirmation all right this is for all Second three hour. outdoor dinings right no there's three people that walked in that need to say their names yeah, like, why not? okay so since it's a vote by affirmation which is a yes if you have recently walked into the meeting and missed voting for anything else we're gonna start with you so Marissa, yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. 
Anybody else in the room? Yes, Hernandez just voted yes. Hernandez. Yes. Kucha. And Kucha. Trisha, are you here yet? Not yet. Okay. So, are there any? She's here. Sorry. <laughs> Turn camera on. And how do you vote? <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I'm just getting to here. That's okay. Mr. Goldstein, yes, yes, choices. All right, are there any no's? <clears throat> you, which one are you voting no to? Oh, uh, 211. Thank you. And are there any other no's? Hearing and seeing none, are there any refusal? I am saying one. You're abstaining I'm from abstaining from the water. What is your last name? Which one are you abstaining? Blaine Street. Blaine Street. Okay. So I'd like to. Hold on. No, no, no. Are there any more abstentions on any of these? Alice, which one are you abstaining on? Abstaining on both roadway cafes, L and M and Mammal. Uh, you got yeah. only there, you know? 184th Lane and 11 Broadway. Questions? Are there any recusals? Do I have anybody else who's abstaining on anything else? I can abstain. Melter abstain from 184th Lane out of spite. Because the thing that makes me the angriest yep. is how hard and long we fought for public seating. Mm. Yeah. And it all got privatized. All right. Me Not too. against them. Mm. All right. Me too. <laughs> I mean, I feel bad for the guy. He's got everything that he wanted. Don't just took a couple of years. He's doing fine. <laughs> but it does, but you know, it, it's not, it, it, you must remember it's what the city has allowed. Yeah. And you really can't, you know, uh, we can stand there and click our heels and it gets us nowhere. I mean, right? look at the city of Red. So I would like to do something. Okay. I would like to take, since I have someone here from there who's not going to speak, but I don't want to keep her any longer, uh, 48 Wall Street. And what I would like to do please, is to ask this to be tabled, all right? And I'm asking for it to be tabled because it was second, voted second. on the committee, okay? And it was voted on the committee before we had a real comprehensive traffic and security plan and discussion. They had just handed it out. We liked the, we liked the concept. And then I went home one night, I crossed Wall Street and almost fell apart because the trap, there's too much stuff going on. So I'm asking, we ask them to come back on the, uh, 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 for the December meeting and we will bring it up in December, but I'm asking for, you, for your affirmation to table. This. By the way, it's yeah. been, and they will come back. Motion made and seconded, but I have a question before you. And they will come back with uh, an extensive plan. Um, and and for everybody, then that, that's the area that's very limited just, space so where Cipriani is. I just want to remind everyone, we still get concerns from residents and people about the traffic that's generated by 55 wall mm -hmm. and the whether they close down the street for load in load out mm -hmm. for events and there's a lot of traffic concerns and pedestrian and circulation concerns so i'm really happy that you're tabling this because 48 wall cannot ignore the elephant across the street yeah. that they're bringing in elephants for themselves. Uh -huh. So everybody has to get together. They should talk to them. Absolutely. That's, yeah. that's, that's, why, why, we that's why Barbara's here. I'm going to call on you. Wait, I want to say one other thing that they, that you all have to know that the spillover, it's not just Wall Street. Okay. Yeah. Wall Street is a mess, but it spills onto William. And William goes down into three Hanover Square and up, and on either side, 
our residents and that they say they have security and then you see the security sitting doing nothing and the horns are honking and you can't cross the street. So there's a lot of work for us to do on it. So Mark, give me your real, question. Real quick. Just so it's clear, they did present a traffic plan. You might have misunderstood that there wasn't one presented. They did present one, but it was woefully inadequate. And the conclusion is that there will be no adverse impact from this place is ridiculous. So they, that's what we saw, and that's why we're in. And it came late. We didn't really yeah. have a chance to so, really so read it. Really out. When, when is licensing in December? December 11th. All right. So here's my recommendation to the board coming from my hospitality background. Holiday parties are most frequently Monday through Thursdays. I challenge everybody to take a trip around that neighborhood. Please. Before before the licensing meeting or before the full board next month, because you will need to in see the, the tours that they have Monday at noon. I'm sure it's really quiet on over there. Or Sunday, Sunday at seven. At seven. I'm pretty sure it's quiet over there. So they, they have. Uh, so you all know, we're all invited to for the You're site. Working. I I consider it was the for, former currency exchange and it's got a big downstairs and whatever it's interesting to see and i would say if you can make any of those times please do inform for manager zach so that uh, zach uh, uh that uh, you'd like to take the tours you're offering yes. that sort of when they come back can you ask them what portion of their um business model and business plan will be private events versus the shows that they showed in the traffic study and the traffic study did not account for any private we gave them 12 that yeah we gave them well i don't know i mean there there are issues now once i solved the traffic well, table. 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 yeah question and so it was like Four or five hundred person capacity, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Any other office building hold thousands of people. Why do we think that this the body Because it's an event thing. It's, it's, it's no different. It's, like, it's no different than Chipione across the street, which we have issues with already. It's it's a problem, yeah. Karen. I, I love the idea. I, I have to tell you, it's a great idea, but that's not the issue. The issue is the controlling and the organizing of the traffic and real security. And what happens is when Cipriot yes, is up to death, that doesn't happen. And I have to go knock on the door and talk to the guy, and then they, you know, whatever. So we've had it, uh, a motion and second. Yeah. And I'm done. Are we ready to vote? Right. Well, the motion yes. table is a vote by affirmation. Are there any? So, yes. if you say nothing, then you're assumed to be a yes. Are there any no's? Here. Here. Jared votes no to table. Are there any other no's to table? Are there any abstentions? <laughs> Hearing and seeing no abstentions. Are there any refusals? <laughs> Motion to table passes. They'll be back in December. Yes. So thank you. So we can go through. Um, uh, uh, there were some corrections. We made time changes. Unless anybody has any questions that we can answer, uh, you could vote on all of these licensing in one fell swoop. Somebody Susan made a motion. And no, no, before the question, a question was asked. Oh, so the motion to take them together was seconded. That's fine. But we have questions. That's fine. Alice, what which address? Uh 95 South Street. And I'm sorry, I didn't. So meeting at 89 South Street. I don't understand. Um, you can just describe to me what the alteration to remove the outdoor portion of the premises means. Um, so it's 95 South Street Building G. I don't even know what that is and what it looks like. I can't quite place it. And what is the rest of them? The, the, the Fulton restaurant. Okay, so that's building Pier 17. I didn't realize that whole area. I know the is, and I followed that. So that's in building G. That's helpful. And so, still, what what are you, what are they doing? They're removing. They're doing this, I don't get it. What is it? 
they're switching locations in terms of the outdoor yeah. part. Switching from one to the and, other. And what will happen to the existing outdoor area? It will be closed and they will move it to the other area and open it. But that's an outdoor space that, that's part of the props or not? We don't no, know. it's part of the private space. Private space. Private space. Private space. It's just all snap pops. Yeah, no, they're just. So they're, they're not. We can put it in the No. Fine. Thanks. I'm right with that. Oh, yes. Just for the record, can you verbally uh, state each address that we're going on? Absolutely. So, Civic Center area, 95 South Street, 89 South Street, Tribeca area, 225 Murray, 6 Murray, Financial District, 20 Maiden Lane, aka 51 Nassau, 11 Wall Street, 11 Wall Street floors, 6 through 8. As well as B and one. 32 seater, 28 Liberty lower level one space B, 48 Wall Street, 41 Wall Street, John. 41 John Street. That are all the addresses that have been proposed and seconded in to take together. Well, not 48. Not 48. Not 48. Thank you. I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Let's you for the corrections. Question. Jeff is it, 225 Murray in Battery Park City. Is that the Harry's? I think it's in yeah, Golden Alley. That's Golden yeah. Alley's address. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's close. Close. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, that should be Battery Park City. Should be Battery Park City. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Jeff, for that. Any other questions? Anybody online have any questions or hands up? Please remember if you're online and you're a board member, you must. Uh, your camera on to be cool. And then when we're done, I have one thing. I want us to vote. All right. Does anybody else have anything else? Going once, going twice. It was called, it was seconded. So we're going to go votes by affirmation. Assuming everybody's a yes, are there any no's? And if you are going to be anything other than a yes, you must know what address. So, for example, you would say Meltzer. One way something like that okay folks no all right uh, do i hear any no's hearing and seeing abstention hold on not that yet hearing and seeing no no's are there any abstentions 95 south street and 89 <coughs> south street no what? blank abstain blank. <laughs> blank abstains from those two abstain, abstain, 95 south and 89 so that's Mark saying, Mark same abstention. Abstention. All right, well, thank you. School. And Marissa abstains from the same. Learn, Any other? Learner abstains for the two uh, South Street applications. Thank you, Joe. Anybody else abstaining from anything else? Seeing and hearing no other abstentions. Are there any recusals? Seeing none, uh, see, sorry, I thought I saw a hand somewhere. Seeing none in the room and none online, all motions passed. So, just one thing I would like to ask you all we voted on 11 Wall Street, it's within the building, but somehow the stock exchange seems to be parking on Nassau Street. And I would like people to walk by. I walked by, I forgot to take pictures. And Joel Capel had mentioned this, and I said, no, no, they don't do that. Well, they do do that. So there you are. Um, so if any of you are around late at night and you see those cars on NASA, they're not supposed to be there. And I would write to uh, uh, I love the stock one exchange. One. What? File a 311 complaint proposed. I had it, but not. I didn't do voters. Anyway, that's the end. And next, you know, next month, we're going to have Maxwell's. So be prepared and have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you all. Okay, Bob. Uh, social club in Trisha, this is here for you, Ned. Sorry, what did you say? You, Ned, you're up for your. Okay, hold on. Let me just get this.
I'm never up this early. Thank you. Um, we had, um, bear with me. We had um, Bob give us a, uh, you know, the update on 234 um, construction. It, the sheds are supposed to come down the end of November. They're still up as of today. It's the end of November. So I sent Josh Adams an email and he came back saying it's going to be down. So it'd be really interesting to see what happens um, this coming few days. Uh, he then also told us about summer rising um, and the changes in different way that RFPs are being delivered for this um, program. That there was really no action, something actionable, except that um, Bob was going to make a call afterwards with DYCD, I believe. Maybe if he's here, he can expound. But uh, otherwise, we're going to just, it was kind of a heads up. So that was good to hear that. There could be some issues there or the desire to expand the program because it was really popular and our lower Manhattan school that was the anchor for it in our neighborhood ended up losing it to Morton Street. So um, there seems to be enough support to bring that program back to lower Manhattan. And then the other thing we had was uh, Colin McAvoy, the principal of Millennium, had come to us because the SCA um, is still working on the 14th floor that was approved before the pandemic. And uh, they still haven't completed it, but they at least have the design plans and they're ready to work. But when Colin saw them, they did not carry through the theme of the observation windows that the school has throughout the space. It's built in an office building. It really helps move the light around given the lack of light where the school is. And the SCA said that they're now not allowed because of terrorism and because of the sight lines they provide. So they went back and forth for a very long time before bringing us in. I finally wrote a letter of support and for that and the fact that they have two PA systems. The SCA, instead of going into the wiring for the 11th through 13th floor, they um, decided to just do two, like have one on 14 and one on 11, serving 11 through 13. Obviously, just a logistical nightmare on top of a safety issue. So um, I wrote uh, highlighting both of those things and the SAA has gotten back and I think there could be some movement, at least on the PA system and maybe a compromise coming. Um, I expect to have a walkthrough the end of next week and we'll have more information by the December meeting. And that is everything. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Trisha. I really appreciate it. Um, Susan, where are you? She's gone. Oh, okay. 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 You're going to have to go find break. After all. all right, next slide. Sorry. I'm good. Transportation, Betty. Uh, gentlemen, if you can make space for Betty to get closer to the table, I'd appreciate it. Because she's dulcet toned and hard to hear. Let me go. We only had two topics. One of the first one is to just highlight. State DOT came to talk about right now. Lab 9A, their mobility and safety enhancements, is the name of the pilot project. In fact, the study is going to take about 24 months. They are very early in the process. It involves the whole quarter. We'll be working with CB4, CB2, and uh, it goes up to about 59 feet. And the study goals is this is again what their goals are at this time. Uh, they want to understand the current and future of, well, I can't read it all, future and current needs. So there's going to be community input, is a big portion of this project. They also want to evaluate the environment. Uh, and they also want to create an uh, inclusive and open process. So that's the things more highlighted versus anything about the pilot project, it's the study itself. And as you can see, we got this guidance too. The state at this time is working on getting their website up. That's they use as an example of just how early they are in the process. But in fact, as you can see, there are multiple points where you can have engagement with the New York State DOT in every single quarter. They will be coming to the transportation committees, each of the three CDs that are involved, uh, one, two, and four. 
they will often have these community engagements where anyone can participate outside and then you can buy some buy some water you're gonna be able to put contest with it. That's really all I have to say. Oh, then we have second item was the New York City DOT talking about their traffic study and street improvements project updates. We come into this is watch the tape. Like Casey Girl, it is very data dense, is the traffic study information. <clears throat> the street improvements, they go through the updates of what's been installed and what is yet to be installed with the SIP. So look at that, and the resolution is going to be on the December agenda of the Transportation Committee. So if you really want to have some say, you get another crack at it. Then watch the tape before you come. Thank you. Anybody? And Mark. For the 9A project, what are some of the preliminary um, suggestions that they want to change? They have made none. none. Not one suggestion. <laughs> There's nothing. There's not one change. There's nothing. It's just they've announced a study. Period. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I hear you groaning. I encourage you to watch the Thank day. you for making us uh, the record that I was groaning. <laughs> yeah, no, they'll come back. Just wanted to, to add to Betty's um, description that we worked really hard on something that you might remember the West Side Resiliency Task Force. This is part of this idea, which is to really look carefully at 9A in terms of any opportunities that might be there for allowing more resiliency and basically safeguarding the Hudson River Park and all the way up the West Side. So I just want to point that out and that will also be something environmental protection may come in tandem with transportation so that we both are reviewing that. Um, Next update. Although Next. I want to make it clear, the DOT, state DOT has not committed themselves to it. What they said they're going to do is work with the various projects yeah. that come up and want to do something with 9A, because they currently are with the Battery Park City Authority. Great. Great. I mean, so it is better open. Yeah. Anyway, we look forward to the end. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, Jar. You're past my. Yeah, yeah, I know. In, the, uh, in the realm of endless studies is there any further anything further on the canal street study that is supposed to come up this fall no i have not heard anything about that yet there are many people waiting many groups waiting thank you <laughs> uh, go ahead <laughs> i would like to acknowledge the care and humor that it has been incorporated in all of these slides. <laughs> I'm very much enjoying them. Well, the yeah. holiday. Yeah, I wondered why this new humor. That we're moving over to houses. What is that? It's got to be a good thing. You'll never see me alive. Brenda and Lucy for the. Uh, yes, thank you, Lucy. For the okay. artwork. Uh, you know, there's. Oh, okay, right. Um, this is, you know, we have the Lower Manhattan Coastal Resiliency Update, that immense, you know, two hours and whatnot. And, I, and basically, there is very little update. And there was, in fact, very little information given. So I'm just going to run through a couple of slides, or, well, actually, excuse me, more than a couple. Anyway. Okay, here's the battery, right? Yeah. Southern end, lots of going on. I would recommend any of you go to, to go see it in person. It's extraordinary. Lifting up the war. Here's phase one, which will end at the end of this year. That's, and you can see on the left, the list of the open public still closed. You know, nothing new here. And phase two, which will go on through June of 20, June 2026, the year after. And so it's what's further south to the right. Um, then we moved on to the, the, the Battery Park City team, and they spoke about started out with South Battery and Wagner Park, and you have to go see that. That pavilion is almost done, or that building, I should say, it's more over. Yeah. So you're looking at the electrical conduit being placed. There's plenty of you know slides to what's going on there. There's the pavilion. It's 90% complete. Quite something to see. The most more extraordinary view, if you want, is to go into the Jewish Heritage Museum and stand and look down and get a very good idea of what's going on there. Uh, that also Pier A, the inlet deck, is being um, completed or relatively soon, and um, that's what's going on here. Um, 
make sure I don't forget any notes that I want to tell you. Yes. And they, and that and in fact that peer A and that all that resiliency work will be done at the end of 2025, which was the most critical part of resiliency work for Lower Manhattan, because it's where most of the water came in during from Storm Sandy. Okay, so then they told us this is the Battery Park City Authority. They moved into the Northwest plans, and the news here is in, very uh, unusual because we knew nothing about the fact that they are doing pile testing. It was the first we had heard of it. And what you're looking at are the four sites where there will be drill pile shafts and micro, they're called micro piles and drill shafts. So basically a form of going down 80 to 90 feet, mm. looking at different types of geotech, basically reviewing the geotechnical engineering assumptions that they've made when they started the plan, seeing if they're accurate, are there opportunities to uh, save money, time, you know, did they make mistakes or that were they too conservative, not conservative enough in their planning? Please look at the sites because they will affect certain neighborhoods more than others. One, two in Tribeca, three at Belvedere Plaza, four down at the South Coast. Here you are in Tribeca on the north end of Harrison Street. You can see already things that are cordoned off there. There's going to be, I think, 10 piles there. There's two locations in front of the other one is in front of Stuyvesant in High School. And this all is going to start in the beginning of December, middle of December, right? And we have received not yet. I don't know if yet, did you, we asked for a flyer on this on SAC and, and clear plans. These plans, they even confess were very hard to read. Yeah. Stuyvesant. Right in front of Stuyvesant. It, yep. Oh, we go backwards. Harrison. Harrison on the north side of the street on uh, Harrison, right next to the uh, borough of Manhattan Community College. Oh. On the on the on the east side. The north east well on the east sorry of 9A. Yeah, yeah. 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 That is that is on the west side here. I think I have a, a here. I have a close up. Uh, well, no, I don't. Sorry, that's all I've got. That's all we were given, by the way. <laughs> yes, Bruce. No, 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 no. It's the east side of West Street. Correct. That's correct. Correct. Exactly. That's where the. The. I'm sorry, could I hear more? Uh, will be All right, stop, stop, stop. Every, hold on. Let Alice answer the question for Bruce. He's catching up. Yeah, we just, there will be a flood wall along Harrison Street as part of the Battery Park City's resiliency measures. From the south across into Tribeca, which is the high ground. Is that so cool? the flood wall. Yes. Okay. Not a, Excuse me. I got a. Or it will be against the wall. Against the walls of BMC. Thank you. All right. Well, I've lost my. Uh, yo, everyone, we need to pause. Something just happened. We have some technical difficulties. I, I, it hasn't come on yet. It's. Yeah. Yes, I'm asking. Come on. Well, I'm going to answer it. I'll keep going on. Yes, we're not in a meeting. So it is not. It's something. No, the idea. I kicked a cord under the table. I heard. I was like, how is this getting decided? Like, is that an hour? Listen, dude, it's 821. Like, I'm going to break time. I'm not hearing nothing from anybody. No, I, I get that. I was just wondering how does it get back. <laughs> turn it back on and reconnect. Well, uh, on there, it's just magic. Up and gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Yay. We're back. We are back. We are back. Apologies to those who are joining us online. I kicked the plug. So we're back to the mini piles. Um, 
in the second location in Tribeca, which is in front or on the uh, east side at, of uh, Stuyvesant High School in that very large plaza, which yeah. will at some point have a pump house located there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the next one is here at the um, South End Avenue um, in the South Cove. Again, the mini plaza. I'll show you a picture of those in a minute. Um, and then here's the last one, which is the biggest one. This is, this is the actual drilled shaft here at Belvedere Plaza, okay? And this is what they look like. And by the way, these two shots I took from the appendix, these were not provided to us at the presentation, so I thought it was interesting. But this is the hydraulic crawl driller that we'll, you'll see out there at some point that will go down and drill down about 90 feet in these locations. And the other one is called the drill shaft, which is much, much bigger, 36 inches wide, and Pretty impactful, I imagine. Um, so they are a bit promising to make sure that noise blankets are put up and fencing and the like. Yeah. So, and hopefully, as promised, we will have flyers to provide to all the neighboring buildings. I mean, no one knows anything about this. Well, next, well, next, where the, where next year, he said he sent uh, he he did send a um, a page from the website. Oh, um, well, did we? Did you get as a flyer? This afternoon. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't see it, so sorry, Nick. That one has it. But okay. Well, at some point, we'll be giving it to everybody. Check you Check me for sure. Okay, well, when you're ready, I can keep going. But. Becky, if you can just make sure that more than a page from the website, you have some kind of flyer, that would be really appreciated. Because at, if you remember from the meeting, the goal was to get it all out to IPN and BMCC and HRPT and everybody else. We were also promised to have drawings that were correct and legible and show correctly what the, what the symbols meant and all of that. When Dawson had promised us, so I hope that can also be arranged to be part of the packet that we send around the public. Thank you. Uh, okay, so that's the, that's. Well, I'm going. Well, I'm not. Can I finish the? Yeah. Uh, can I, you mean about? Oh, about the file. Yeah. So, both these methods are really. We want to. Or bagging. Know. Is it no, not bagging. And what is the uh do they give any indication of what the noise is uh on this particular? Drill that's going down 90 feet. I don't know. I've never witnessed this. I think the 36 inch that will be pretty, but that is out of Belvedere Plaza, so it's a little farther from anybody. These simple forms. So, um, what about hours? Have you been able to get anything about hours and how they're going to start? It's a good point. We definitely should be following up on that. Yeah. I don't know is the answer to your question. We, we received nothing. It's the first we've ever heard of it. So, we're, this is starting within the next three weeks, right, Tommy? So, yeah. So, so, maybe that's another aspect to follow up with Nick to get the hours and the decibel level if we can. videos on one. Yes, that's no level. Got it. They want to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have any questions? All right. Moving on to the five I see port as you know, those plans you've seen, it's the same story. Um, you're laughing. Can I help you? <laughs> no, because we're, we're like, how many slides do we have? Oh, two. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two it's, I was just going around the coastline. Yeah, so. no, I thought it was. My dog's going to die. Okay, so the five dogs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right? Hours are 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Friday. Okay. So, um, the, so, so, um, uh, we've just gone through Battery Park City in two minutes. I think that's not too bad. And now we're moving on to the Friday C4 project. You all know the, 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 the big master plan. And, the main, and they didn't show anything at all about the plan, but they did really make a call for us to support them in terms of advocacy to get funding because, of course, a lot of this is going to come from federal funding. They're at 30% here, and you can see yeah. the red line yeah. where we are. Uh, the next stage is environmental review, and this is what they really want to get support for. And here's what it costs. Five. 
uh, cost 5.4, they're estimating $5.4 billion. And they and you look at the breakdown, the part cost off costs. And basically what they're saying is that the longer we wait to get this funded, of course, the more expensive it will be in the next five years, it will double and all of these statistics they were given. And they hope to work with the Army Corps and that's where the federal money would come. And they could talk about an optimistic scenario where 10% of the budget would come out of New York City, 25% from the state, and the rest of the 65% from federal. But more likely, the conservative scenario would be 35% out of the city, and they're looking for us to advocate more for money, and they're, you know, another slide in the hole. And uh, the last, um, or the second last, the seaport coastal resilience plans, which you remember, these are the near-term plans. Nothing was shown as to what this is going to look like. This is the meeting that Tammy referred to. You must come. And environmental protection is has to come on um, December 16th, which we just talked about, and which you'll get updates on. And that's you have to see the outreach going ahead on that project. So we're looking forward to that meeting to finally see what's up. And this is paid for. Yes. And yes, right. I have a timer running on Alice. If anybody's <laughs> Yeah, I mean, then you know, it, it well, then I guess we could all say just go look at the you see? Too, because it's either this or you'd go look at YouTube. Oh. Anyway, what can I say? There's the Brooklyn community, Brooklyn, the, the borough, the, uh, the, the, the bridge the project, the MCR project, and here's the last project. And all you need to know is next February, you won't be living through this again until next February when they do the next. Uh, LMCR update, and the, the only other thing missing is that they'll finish a southern tie in workshop to talk about how all this project ties into Bowling Green, if you can believe it, will be interesting. And that's it on that project. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right, I guess I'm up next. February two months from now. All the shows up. Yeah, I'm only going to report on. Um, uh, Two of the uh, uh, agenda items. You can uh, nice. watch the YouTube to hear about the rest. Also, you can have questions about the rest. I'm just glad to take them now. Uh, next slide, please, please. Okay, so the first item is the status of the Wagner Park Pavilion slash restaurant. Uh, half of that pavilion will be a restaurant, just as it was uh, before the RFP has just been uh, reissued, and this is just a rendering of what it might look like, especially a little exactly like that, but the, um, the seating and whatnot um, is up to uh, plans to be determined. And these are the considerations that are listed here in terms of how they're going to select an operator. We want an experienced operator, high quality and sustainable food, year round sustainable operations. Uh, try to get the restaurant open the same time as Wagner Park, although that seems fairly optimistic and responsiveness to the community goals. Next slide, please. Uh, and so in terms of the selection criteria of the operator, 40% uh, of the weight uh, goes to program design and community benefits, 30% experience and qualifications, 20% uh, construction, feasibility and timeline and so forth, and then 10% uh, how much money uh, can the authority make on it. So. Kind of nice to see that uh, profitability to the authority is only 10% of the criteria. Uh, next slide. There is a timeline. RFP was re uh, was released a few weeks ago um, in an information session um, last week uh, for bidders or mm -hmm. people interested in responding. Deadline for questions is in December. Deadline for the proposal. Uh, is in uh, January, and they are hoping uh, that they can select an operator, as I said before, to open the restaurant roughly concurrently with Wagner Park opening this summer. Next slide. This is the next subject. Dog runs are in the process of being uh, uh, tinkered with uh, to make them uh, somewhat better than they are today. Uh, this is intended to be um, not a redesign of the um, of the runs, but uh, maintenance, redoing things, and they're looking at uh, uh, resurfacing, fixing the gates and fences, uh, fixing or augmenting the water play as well as the topography, um, seating shading, drinking fountains, we've collected and so forth. Next slide. 
and the time frame for this, starting the design in January, um, and hoping to begin construction in the fall of 2025. Uh, that image there was from the Dog Halloween Parade uh, at the end of October. And that is my report. First, okay. some of us here can provide historical reference. That's Bob. Uh, I just want to say that some of us in this room were in preschool. <laughs> when we started discussing the dog, dog runs, <laughs> and, uh, ah, never had me as well. So it is gross. What did I say, Jeff? <laughs> well, but I, uh, I can uh, augment yeah, that history is that one of the reasons I joined. <laughs> that was like the biggest <laughs> topic. So, yes. Um, yes. Oh, no, I'm, I'm just stretching. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Behind the pole, sorry. Oh, okay. Rosa, oh, Rosa, get louder because yes, absolutely. He knows you're Okay. And the only comment that I want to say is the only dog run that they are not going to go over is the one that's over by the West Side Highway, south of West Thames. And in all transparency, it's because of the amount of jurisdictions that are over there. That, that's right. That the dog run in West Thames is actually on DOT property. Uh, and was in fact built by DOT, although with cooperation with the authority, and the authority maintains it. Mm -hmm. They do intend to try to fix that one up as well, but it's taking longer to get the jurisdictional issues. Okay. We not each there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, you're up. Oh, you're up. Sorry, you're up. You're up. You're up. <laughs> well, nothing controversial. So why don't we just take them all together? We don't say that. Uh, <laughs> a general refurbishment of this building with some extra railings that need to be put up for safety. That's a good example of a mock-up of a railing that, that they would like to put on the setback. The next slide. Then uh, this has all been destroyed, like this pavement. This, mm. this is an art installation. It's been there only 30 years or so. So, <laughs> of course, they need to fix it. And when they fix it, they're going to add some more trees and relocate some benches. It's not really um, at the crux of this. There's no real landmark issue. Um, you know, honestly, uh, this is what, what they're re what they're adjusting and fi fixing uh, in terms of. Um, open space is, is not even 30, 30 years old. Yeah. What is it? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. you know, it's not, I don't, I don't know if you call it a park. It it's, is, it's, it's, it's park. It is a park. There you go. Did you hear back? Sorry. I'm yes, they responded. Uh, they can't do subterranean bathrooms as I suggested. And, uh, they said something about the net. The net gain of benches versus trees or something. There's a yeah. net loss of yeah. seating. Okay, net and loss so of seating. What we asked was they're losing five eight foot benches to accommodate mm -hmm. the um, accessibility needs to have companion seating. And so the question was raised, and we did not get an answer unless you did and I didn't, uh, as to whether or not they could use some of the four foot benches that they had. Instead of the eight foot benches to not lose the entire seating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't remember what the response was, but I think if we could like get a one liner in here that says we want that regardless, let's just do that. Right about mm -hmm. companion seating and yeah, not losing. Yeah, okay. I think we can do that. I know we can do that. Um, so then here's another picture of this area where the majority of the work is re redoing this, these pavements and tree pits and stuff. So it's going to be better for the community uh, in terms of the public space there. I think if we can get our bench spots next was what Franklin, sorry, Franklin. Franklin. Um, so this is the legalization of this gray, um, painted storefront, which likely was treated with some sort of sandstone paint to color finish back when it was built. Mm -hmm. But um, seeing that it, they, they did present um, some historic photos that showed it was at one time period uh, in the historically significant time period gray. Um, and there's, I think, you know, there is precedence for it. So 
what we did was we thought it was appropriate to legalize it. And then I added something about how we would like them to do some sort of paint analysis to just memorialize what may have been the original layer of finish, whether that actually happened. We've been not sure. How um, old is that? Sorry, uh, How old is that Justine. Oh, this is an old one. It's probably so you know 1850s, right? It's, it's sandstone and yeah. And Mike, what does that mean, legalization? So they painted it gray, right. and uh, we yeah. could say uh, we don't think that that's an appropriate color, or uh, you should go to the public hearing and present okay. evidence that it could be. I think in this case, they did present evidence that it could be. It's not ideal, but you know, different than a building that may have never been treated that way or didn't have buildings next to it treating it that way. I, you know, I think there's a circumstance where it's like it's a harder, you know, thing. And, you know, Bruce, I don't remember, you know, I don't know your thoughts, but I think. No, no, it's yeah. fine. I was just okay, great. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah. So that's 77 Franklin. And then we have one more. Okay. Right. So this that? was this young lady spoke about, uh, you know, this is about, um, with a parapet, what was the what was the twenty three feet, twenty two feet or so? Yeah, um, you know, there's a couple of things that don't work here. I think most most people would think that the building would continue uh, this, you know, the street wall, but there are some easements on the property. We're not here to like understand them, read them, say they're that they're interpreting the right way or not. Um, so. You know, we thought it was generally an inappropriate, you know, not contextual building. I think I wrote that in the in the thing in the thing. And you know, um, it's a tough problem because how do you make a building contextual when you can't continue the street wall when you can't uh, make it more stories? And uh, I don't think this is the answer. But um, you know, if anybody wants, Bruce, uh, I actually spoke to um, Jordan Robot, who's the principal at DXA, who I know very well. And actually have worked with on occasion, and I contested. I, I told him I was going to you know, be at this meeting. I could be at Rainmasters, and I have some suggested changes for the resolution. If you don't mind, sure. Tell me what you think. Just grammatically, the first whereas uh, the building envelope from being higher than one story with mezzanine and limiting street walls to no more. Than 22 feet rather than the way it's written. Okay, okay. good. I, I skipped over the um, the third whereas, which is sort of like the um, Derek Zoolander sent up because we can't read good. Okay. I can't, I'm not going to improve okay. that. Okay. The, the um, third resolution mm -hmm. or, or third whereas. Yeah, okay. or, or maybe this can replace the third whereas. This is a modest site printed with. Overblown statement design more appropriate to a 10 story building. And I continue the elements ostensibly referencing neighborhood typologies like arches are here merely exaggerated quotations. Therefore, be resolved that. And I, I can't say, I mean, I appreciate, I, I can't say I understand. CB1 recommends that the applicant revisit their design for this property and be expected the developer to reach out. Oh, we expect it, the developer, it's, right. Uh, it's, okay. it's, so we it's have a strong. Uh, okay, well, we expect the developer to, to contact the neighbors, which they apparently didn't. You know, there's, look, there's an easement on the property. Right. I don't and, really and, and, care to know anything about the easement, exactly. but uh, and we should be nowhere near interpreting it. But, Precisely. Uh, about the architecture. Yeah, but I think they need to reach out, even though we're talking about the architecture, to these adjacent properties before this moves forward in any way. I mean, right. how you can yeah. ever. It's a modest site with a modest program and a very overblown statement uh, design. I like that. I, think that's, I like that. Yeah. Okay. What about the request? Right. Yes. Request. Yeah, request. request. Or, or even right. something the next so level looking. stronger. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. No. yeah. yeah. I don't that is, uh, what is that? You can't demand. Well, well listen, the thing is, like, you, you can't put forward this thing with to any, like, city agency right. if you don't know the boundaries of the law. So, 
that that it's like you do you're making people do a lot of work and maybe someone's going to interpret this thing and say you can't even build eight eight feet tall and then everyone's done all this nonsense for nothing so if there was a way that we could just um and bruce you say these people have been working here for a while you know i mean i'm sorry you these people are dxa they've done buildings here i mean they know yeah, say yeah, say Jordan used to be with. Uh, right, so I don't. Jordan I used to be. With, you uh, know, they have Morris Atkins. They have representation of an adjacent neighbor here. Oh. And, you know, in the old days, there'd be a ton of people here probably. For that's, some reason, that's, right. that's fallen off. So, and they came to the meeting before. So and we had an earlier resolution on an earlier proposal, I guess, in 2019 that I wrote, which was more right. sarcastic than this, as Jordan pointed out in 2019. But this is better than that, but this is not. But that is in, was approved, right? And that was approved, it's just the last 1950s uh, storefront gotcha. aluminum frame. Okay. So we're going to add some more, we're going to replace some things with Bruce's, okay. whereas there, we'll take that. And then we want a strongly worded uh, reach out to the neighbors that there's like, seems to be three properties. Anybody else that really likes it and wants to change it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. How if you look at the other single story buildings in the area, yes, yeah. so it's like they're much simpler than this. They okay, they're much more uniform than this. Yeah, I think Bruce's kind of comment about how it's like too much for its own pants, you know, <laughs> exactly. like yeah. too much for one story. Did you say that someone is here representing DSA? No, no, no. 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 neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Watch out, there's a question in mind. Okay. <laughs> Joe Lerner, raise your hand. Uh, go ahead. One of the problems are, is rather, that the um, one picture shows grass, the other doesn't, and they're taken from different viewpoints, so you really can't compare the two. I'm not sure which one I like better, but two different pictures of one site uh, doesn't help me much. Joe, are you talking about uh, Center Street? I'm talking what's on the, uh, Hudson, 74 Hudson. Uh -huh. Are you on the grass or is the grass on the picture? <laughs> no, you're smoking grass. He's probably looking at the green that looks like on top. I mean, there's no grass. There's no grass. It, was, it was green in the picture. Oh, yeah. Go back. Go back and then we'll... I understand what he's talking about. Yeah, no yeah. Uh, they're two uh, different that's pictures. Like that's like a screen, Joe. No screen. That's like an architectural but... feature. Oh, really? That, that's fine. That's, that's fine, but you're matching two different pictures for me. One with color, one without color. Different, different, different viewpoints, different angles. Understand. Joe, you hate it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He does not like it. He does not like the green. Okay. okay. I don't like both of them. Okay. okay. Bye. We're we got it. It. Four minutes. Come on. Someone could call the question. If call the question. One second. second. You want to take them all together? Yes. Yes. And we'll use Bruce's. This changes and ground grammatical uh, it's left the group. Meeting. It's just really being a better statement about how we don't do this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So did you sorry. Um nope, never let me keep my mouth shut. I need to look and read first. That'd be really oh. now I can give you the change that they were using that. Yeah, okay. yeah, just being the address. Let's see how it's out. Bruce. That's when I miss you, baby. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 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 Y
three lights over there. This is a modest site, yeah. framed, which may be too cute, uh, overburdened. No, not overburdened. This well, is a the modest, yeah, but, uh, you know, this is a modest site um, of uh, design. Something like printed with overblown quote statement unquote design more appropriate to a ten story building, and and this may be a new a new whereas so you can replace the next one. The elements. I can hear you, Bob, up here. I need you, Bob. Bob, I can hear you, which means I can hear you on the owls, which means. Strikingly and oddly, I can't actually hear Bruce. Oh, okay. Because I didn't want anyone to hear what I was saying. Uh, exactly. Then okay. Take it yeah. down the hall. Beth Evers. The elements ostensibly referencing neighborhood typologies, which you went on and on about bathhouses and all this bullshit. Part. The elements ostensibly referencing neighborhood typologies, like arches, are here merely exaggerated quotations. I can't change the, uh, I didn't change the therefore to resolve that, but I think it should be stronger and clearer. And that's up to you. Yes, it should be stronger. The point being, we don't like it and we yeah. want yeah. them to be yeah. out. We want them to reach out to all of their, their abutting neighbors. Sounds who like own these restrictions or right. this property. Okay. Let's go on. No, I mean, I think I got in the margin. We have to go. Uh, yeah. yes. Okay, so now that we have all of Bruce's language in, thank you, Jason. Um, and it's on the record. The motion was Wait. made and it was seconded to yeah. take all three together, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. All right. So this is for all three landmarks resolutions, which is um, 60 Center. Yep. 77 Franklin and a negative resolution for 74 Hudson. Correct. And the one modification that was made for 16 Center. Okay. We'll do a vote by affirmation. Do I hear any no's? Amazon. Amazon, please, if you're online. Do I hear any abstentions? Uh, number for, for Hudson Street, I abstain. Learner abstains on Hudson. Last name and abstain. Portia Corey. Portia Corey abstains on Hudson. No more abstentions. Are there, I ask for no's. Are there any recusals? Okay, all motions passed. Thank you. Jason, please make sure your camera's on to be counted for the vote. Jason, pardon? I'm here. Okay, Snake. Come in after the first word. I, I was on the call in the very beginning. Yeah. No, she was online. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Well, 10 I see online. So. That means I gotta go. She was on high. Yes, yeah, 10 percent batteries. Yeah. Really fast. Uh, as yeah. we all know, 320 Carl Street is still the debate, the issue, the argument is still going on. Contract has not been signed. It does you who don't know what's going on. It's a safe haven shelter. Uh, co ed next to uh, a school, five, the doors are five feet away. So, contract hasn't been signed. We're still fighting it. They may come back next month with more information. We have asked them some more questions. We still want to know why they're act talking as though they're continuing and they're going to pursue, they're going to, you know, continue with this project when everybody in the community is firmly against this project. But right they're pursuing it because they've even outreached. Yeah, they're pursuing it. Because yeah. You know, we run the after school program next door, so they want to see what our buses, whether or not. But I okay. think they're a go. I mean, you could. They have signed contact, contracts. So I know. Well, God bless you. Okay. And so now to the uh, Rezo has them already read it. Uh, it's to increase beds for um, mental illness treatments from 16, I think it is, to uh, 36. Have you all read it? Yeah. Yes. Can we vote? Yeah, this is our last resolution. Welcome to roll call. You got it. What? Betty? I yes. I'm Marisa. Yeah. Yes, like yes. Brown Kenny. <laughs> Brown Kenny. <Kennedy. laughs> yeah. That's not a turn. Cameron? Cameron. Cassell? Cassell, yes. Go to the back. Chang? <laughs> 
Charcutian. Charcutian, yes. Poe. Poe, yes. Bowman. Oh. Corman. Corman, yes. Lucia. Lucia, yes. Yeah. Curtis. Curtis, yes. Herman. Herman, yes. Flores. Flores, yes. Uh, Forsberg. Uh, Friedman. Friedman, yes. Roman. Roman, yes. Galloway. Galloway, yes. Goldstein. Here, Chapman. Okay, thank you. Um, Hernandez. Yes. Ershad. Ershad, yes. James. Yeah. Joyce. Uh, Don't leave. I've got one comment for me. Never mm -hmm. Yeah, Canelia. Yeah. Uh, Papo? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Learner? Learner, yes. Uh, Lewison? Lewison, yes. Lynn? Mm. Uh, Lion? Lion, yes. Meltzer? Meltzer, yes. Minsley? Minsley, yes. Yeah. Moore? Moore, yes. Anya? Take time, yeah. Yes. Here, yeah. Uh, Portugori. Portugori, yeah. Uh, Robinson. Robinson, yes. Rossi. Uh, Scott. Scott, yeah. Sheer. Song, Jenny Song. Uh, sorry. Uh, Beer Song. Terry. Thank you, Jesse. Yes. Family. Yes. Uh, you. Yes. Zelta. Okay. Camera. Yes. I missed the ball. All right. Mm -hmm. I want to make one announcement on our new business. Um, Bruce Airman. His last meeting will be in January with us. Bruce is leaving after 25 years on the board. He's announcing at the end of. November, so we'll do something fun for Bruce at the end of January. Everybody, everybody remember, we actually need people on landmarks. So if you would like to join landmarks, please send me a note. If you feel you have some passion and you want to rotate around at the end of the year, send me a note. And know that if you find somebody who happens to have we'll kids in the safe. district and is familiar with landmarks, we need both of those. Mm -hmm. Thank you mm -hmm. and have a good night. We have to